Joyce, where are you? Are you not coming home yet? Rihanna, sorry. I'm having drinks with my mates. I'm celebrating my promotion. I'll be home soon. Celebrating your promotion? You're promoted. You didn't tell me. Oh, right. I was gonna tell you once I got home, so you didn't know. Yeah, I was told unofficially recently. My career is secured, I guess. Wow, congrats. Thanks. We're celebrating it today, so I'll be home late. Really? But we have my family gathering tomorrow. I'll introduce you to everyone, so you need to be there. Well, yeah, of course I'll be there. That's good, but... We have to leave pretty early in the morning. Are you gonna be able to make it after drinking this much? Yeah, yeah, I won't get drunk. Plus, my mates were the ones who asked me out. I wasn't about to say no to them. I get that, but... Tomorrow's gathering has been scheduled for over a month now. You could have kept that in mind and said no. Oh, don't be upset. These guys will be working for me someday. If I ever want to get another promotion, I need to build up a good relationship with these guys. Tonight could mean a lot for my career. Understand, Rihanna? Listen, I'm not against drinking with your folks. But if you have an important event the next day, you should prioritize it, shouldn't you? That's all I'm saying. This is for our life. For our life? Yeah! These guys join my team, work for me. This will make my career, meaning I can support you. And if we're ever to have a family. This is not just for me only. It's for you, too. Still, you should prioritize the schedule you already planned, I think. If you saying no to their invitation once is enough for them to leave you, doesn't that mean that they never really respected you? What's wrong, Rihanna? You don't get upset like that. Why are you so serious? I I'm not upset. Just worried. I mean, when you first met my parents... You were hungover, remember? At that time, my parents were very upset, and we had to apologize many times. Remember? Yeah, that happened. My uncle, who's been taking good care of me, is coming tomorrow. If the same thing happens again, we'll be in huge trouble. So don't drink too much and come back home already. <sighs> Before going to meet your parents, I needed some drinks. To relax, you know? You see, meeting your parents made me more anxious than I'd ever been. I should say, this time, it's the extended family, but they are still your family. I'm nervous, so my friends and I will go to a couple more places, and after that, I should be relaxed, and then I'll come home. A couple more places? Are you gonna have more drinks? Until what time? You'll miss the last train. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm not gonna miss the last train, so let me just get relaxed for once. Drinking's the only way for me to forget things. You say for once, but didn't you just grab drinks the other day? No, you've been doing this almost every day, am I wrong? You sure? Well, yeah, we had to apologize many times, but uh, birthdays of my boss and my mates, I mean, I, I have to be there. I'm the life of the party, you know? The life of the party, huh? I know quite a lot of places, so people come to me. What can I do? If you go out this often, fine, but please come home early just for today? Please. Come on, Rihanna. What's wrong? This isn't like you. Tomorrow's a very important day. I know that. But then don't nag me like this for a mistake I already apologized for. It's like I'm talking to your parents. Are you becoming like them? 
becoming like them. Of course I'm like them. They're my parents. <laughs> You're right. Oh my god. You're pretty drunk. Joyce, you should be home already. Don't stay until the last train. Please, can you just leave now? Enough. I'm doing this for my future. Got that? You don't understand. Marrying a person like you is very stressful. So, to let off some stress, I'm having drinks. What's so wrong with it? Are you going to take away every little thing that I enjoy? That's not what I'm doing. Just... My parents and I want to welcome you into our family. And I'm very worried that we'll be humiliated again. Please understand. Oh boy. I'll catch the last train and I'll be there tomorrow. So could you please back off now? Okay. I understand. Sorry to bother you, Joyce. I'll see you when you get home. Later. Two hours later. Rihanna, I'm sorry. I missed the last train. What? You promised me! You promised me you'd catch the last train! Why can't you just keep your promises? I told you. What now? My family made time for our gathering, so it's not going to be rescheduled. I'm leaving at 8 a.m. tomorrow. Can you make it? Oh, yeah. No worries. I got plenty of time. I'll take the first train in the morning, then I should be able to make it, right? It'll be fine. The first train in the morning? I don't think you can catch it. I can. Well, just in case, why don't you just come back home now, by a cab? Well, I paid almost everything tonight. So, I wonder if I'll have enough to ride a cab. I don't think so. And uh, I had too much to drink. I'll get sick in a cab. I'll rest somewhere and then head home. I, I can pay for your ride when you get here. Throwing up in a cab is the most humiliating thing in the world. No cab. Okay. Wait a second. Leaving at 8 a.m. Isn't that too early? Are we really supposed to meet up that early? My family members are quite busy. They've tried really hard to schedule this meeting for us, and this was the only time that everyone was available. I've tolerated your drinking enough, right? So I'm asking you to be there on time for this one gathering. Okay, okay, don't get upset, yeah? I'm not upset. I'm just uneasy. Since you didn't come back home. I'm telling you, I'll be home, taking the first train in the morning. Trust me. You told me that you'd be home with the last train. My bad. The first train in the morning. That's it. Trust me. Please. Promise? Don't be late at all costs. I'm doing this for you. You don't have to say it a thousand times, I know. Okay, you should go to bed now. If you look tired, your family and friends will all say that it's my fault. Fine. I'm off to bed now. Be sure to catch the first train. Yeah, I promise. I'll go with one of my mates and stay up drinking all night so I don't sleep through the train coming. That way I can't miss the train, right? <laughs> Oh, gee. Uh, I guess if you'll be up all night, but I really don't want you to drink anymore. Okay, once I'm on the next train, I'll text you. You'll probably still be sleeping, so don't worry about replying to it. Okay, fine. Well then, good night. Five hours later. Joyce, it's 6 a.m. already. The first train should be running. Are you on it? I thought you'd text me. Joyce? Hey, if you're up, text me. One hour later. Joyce! Are you still sleeping? 
It's 7 a.m. now. You should be heading home by now, otherwise you'll be late. Hey, Joyce, where are you? Joyce? One hour later. <laughs> I'm sorry, Rihanna. I fell asleep. I might still be drunk now, too. I'm so sorry. I'll hurry to go home. Rihanna, are you mad? My bad. I couldn't read your texts. I was gonna wake up. You know that, right? Where are you? Still home? Please be ready with my clothes, and we can leave right away. Rihanna, text me back. Forget about it. I'm on my way. I'm sorry. I woke up at 6.30 once. I did, really. But I fell back asleep. I'm hurrying up now. I hope I can make it. No, I will make it in time. No need. Huh? You don't have to come. Oh, don't say such a thing. I'll be quick. No, have another drink and enjoy the day. Who is going to drink this early in the morning? Come on, don't be mad like that. We could still meet your family. If we argue, they'll wonder if we're like this all the time. Oh, you say things like that now, but you didn't get home on time. No, don't even bother. You don't have to come. I don't need you. Hey, watch your mouth. Fine, if you say so, I won't come. It's just a family gathering. You could have just showed up by yourself from the beginning. Joyce, I can't stay with someone who keeps breaking promises like this. What are you saying all of a sudden? I want to call off our engagement. What are you saying? Why? Is your family talking you into this? No. I was determined to break up with you if you didn't come back home as you promised. What? I packed up all my stuff yesterday, and I moved out of our apartment already. Hey, you can't be serious, Rihanna. I'm serious. At today's gathering, I'll tell everyone about this broken engagement. Stop kidding. Sure, that'll get everyone's attention, but they'll just be shocked. No one's gonna laugh at your joke. It's not a joke, so they don't need to laugh. Surely they'll be surprised, but they'll understand knowing you. S serious? How can I joke about something like this? You're right. Oh, man. I'm sorry. I'm truly sorry. This will not happen again, yeah? Forgive me. I was just drunk, you know? Today was an important day. I told you many times. I feel bad. I apologized. And we've met your parents, so it's not easy now to break the engagement. It would be so embarrassing. Keep your temper. Right, Rihanna? I can't. I've tolerated you enough. You've abused me mentally. You've cheated on me many times. And every time I thought of breaking up with you, but then you apologized to me, crying, and so I'd forgive you. But I'll stop it now. I was not good forgiving you. So... I'll bear some shame in that, but I've made up my mind. I can't stay with you. This is over. Even if I apologize this much? Yes. I can't do this. Oh my god. Enough. Don't get cocky. I'm apologizing and you crossed the line. A family gathering like that is just an informal thing for old geezers. Why do I even have to go to such a thing anyways? I get nervous, it's tiring, and I have to fake smile. I don't want to go, you can imagine. For you, it's your family, but for me, these guys are nobody. Your family is nothing to me. Can't you see? You could have been thoughtful for things like this. I attended all your family's gatherings, all of them and I never complained, and I was never late. A am I wrong? They are no one to me, but I faked my smile to act like your ideal wife. 
It's a woman's job to give the man what he wants. That's your purpose, right? What? Are you being serious? Women around me all behave this way. Only you have ever complained about it. Grow up already. I knew it. I can't marry you. Fine. I'll easily find someone to replace you. Don't worry. You'll regret this stupid decision. Breaking up with me after I got promoted. Don't come crawling back to me when I'm rich. Getting even further promoted. Don't stalk me or threaten me to start over with you. I won't be able to deal with it. When I'm famous, everyone will be watching. So you won't be able to do a thing. Bye bye. One week later. Brianna, it's been a while. It's me. Can we talk? Well, I hurt you very much, and I'm sorry about it. I truly am sorry. So, can we get back together? Please? You're all that I have. I realized. Please, Rana, reply to me. What? We broke up. Broken engagement, you know what that means. It's too late to apologize. Now back off. Besides, I thought you wouldn't want to get back with me. I'm so sorry. I had no idea that you were the niece of the CEO. Yeah? CEO announced my demotion today, and I'll be sent to a remote office. And? Uh, I asked for a reason, and he told me that you're his niece and I said something bad to you. Well, it's true, isn't it? And I've told you many times my uncle, who was very important, was coming. So you'd better be there. And still, you chose not to come. Why didn't you tell me that the CEO is your uncle? If I knew, I wouldn't have gone out for a single drink. I would have attended. I'd be there, no matter what. Bullshit! If you knew I was related to the CEO, you wouldn't go drinking? You'd attend the gathering? Of course. Of course I put you at the top of the list if I knew. How could you not tell me? Well, my uncle and aunt have no children. They couldn't have one. But they liked taking care of kids. After I was born, they've treated me like their own child. They were there for me during everything. And they didn't miss to celebrate any occasion, even though they were busy. So, when my uncle found out that I was getting married with one of his employees, he was happy, and he promoted you. I didn't know. I thought this was on my results. My uncle likes surprising people. He told me not to tell you because he wanted to surprise you at the gathering. That's why I didn't tell you. Oh boy. But you didn't show up at the gathering, of course. I told everyone the reason why. You! How could you? I told them about the engagement, about the mental abuses, and about cheating, all of them. And they listened to me. I could barely breathe, I was so emotional at the end. But everyone stayed on my side. Of course, my uncle too. He was very mad and said that he was ashamed that he appointed you to take a lead. He regretted promoting you. And then I showed all of our texts, crying. What? All of them? Yes, I did. All of them. Then my uncle was getting ready to punish you send you to work on a remote island. No way. Rihanna, please, I'll change. You'll change? Why? Why? Because I want to start over with you. I'm asking. It was my fault that I ignored you and went for drinks. You have nothing to be blamed for. Okay, and? What do you want me to do? Can you call your uncle and tell him that I'll be different and that I'll take care of you, and that I should keep my promotion because we're getting back together. Please, I still love you. It's true. Believe me. So, please ask him not to punish me. That's what you want. You don't care about my feelings. No, that's not true. I love you. You wouldn't be able to get a promotion without me. How funny. I'm begging. I'll change. 
If you want, I'll kneel down to apologize. Please, come back to me. I could do this for you. From now on, it'll be different and you'll be my top priority. And I'll listen to you alone. Please. Be different, you say? But can you really be so different from now on? That's really something. That you can be so different this easily. Maybe you don't remember all the other times that you said that you'd be different and failed. Since you're different now. Rihanna, I am not bullshitting you. My life depends on this. Help me. You know you love me. Come on. Love? No. I don't love you. I've had enough. Really. Why did I even get engaged to someone like you? I regret it. So it's over between us. I won't be talking with my uncle to help you. Never. It doesn't matter. Maybe you'll find a better girl on that island. Rihanna, no kidding. Hey, don't dump me, please. And I'll sue you, okay? What? Sue me? You betrayed me multiple times. Mental abuse and cheating. I kept all the evidence for this. So I'll demand compensation. Pay with no delay, got it? Wait, Rihanna, I really love you. Please, give me another chance. Don't worry. You can find another girl in no time, you said. Let's hope you can find one on your very own private island. Bye. Thereafter. After that, Joyce was sent to an office on an island where very few people live. He felt disappointed and got further addicted to drinking. After Joyce was sent away, the friends who used to drink with him didn't follow him to the new location. So, he's drinking alone at the end. It's a small office on the remote island, but it's still a part of my uncle's company. If business isn't good, or someone complains about him, even more severe punishment is waiting for him. Thus, Joyce always needs to give the best of himself. No time for these little relaxing drinking parties. And me, after our breakup, I started to date with a kind gentleman whom I was introduced to by my uncle. He is totally different from Joyce. He keeps his promises, hates alcohol, and has no interest in promotion. He joined the company to give himself a challenge. People respect him a lot. I suggested to him to go out with his colleagues several times to drink and mingle, but he says he likes it better at home. And he rarely does go out. But then, when I tell him about restaurants I see on TV, he'll take me there. Like this, I'm finally living happily with someone who cares about me a lot. Where are you now? What's up? What's wrong? I was wondering how you're doing right now. Are you staying over at my house tonight? Why the sudden question? That's strange. I won't be staying at your place tonight. It's my last night as a single woman, after all. I was thinking of staying at my parents' house, if I do stay over somewhere. They also said they wanted to see me. If you're staying at your parents' house, I feel relieved. Your mother contacted me a little while ago. My mom contacted you? I was worried about you because you hadn't come home, so I was wondering if you were going to stay at my place overnight. I've really been worried about you. I'll be home soon, so don't worry. I think my parents are being just a bit sensitive, so please don't worry about it. I might have just forgotten to let them know that I was staying over at your place tonight. It's not just your parents. I'm worried about you, too. You do realize what's happening tomorrow, right? What are you doing right now? I'm enjoying some drinks because it's my last night as a single woman. Are you still drinking at this hour? Who are you with? I'm worried now that I know you're out drinking. You're exaggerating. My co-workers are throwing a celebration for me, so don't worry. 
You didn't have to go out today. Where are you drinking? You've been here before, right? It's a bar near my workplace. Oh, that place. It's a bit far from your parents' house. Can you get back home safely? What? Don't you trust me? I'll be fine. I'll be back in no time. You've said that before and ended up coming back in the morning, haven't you? That's in the past. Well, it wasn't just once. I'm worried. Ugh, don't treat me like a child. At least children don't stay out all night, so that's a little better. Hey, don't say anything more. That's negative. Tonight is my last night as a single woman, you know. Everyone is celebrating for me, so let me have fun and enjoy my drinks. Besides, I plan to go home early tonight. I want you to trust me. If you put it that way, I'll trust you. Tomorrow is an important day, so I'm just being cautious. I'm glad you trust me. Things are really exciting here right now, so I'll fill you in later. All right, then. Talk to you later. Make sure to contact me once you get home. Of course. I'll contact you. Please, trust me. The next morning. <coughs> it's already five in the morning. Have you made it home safely since I haven't heard from you? I hope you're not still out drinking, right? Today is an important day for us. <coughs> Please let me know when you see this message. I'm worried about you. Two hours later. Are you just sleeping? If that's the case, it's okay. But I'm worried that I can't reach you. I'm worried that you might have passed out somewhere. Please reply to my message if you see it. <coughs> I was worried because I couldn't reach you, so I contacted your parents. You didn't go back to your parents' house last night after all. They told me they had received a message late at night that you would be staying at my house last night. They were surprised to know that you didn't come to my house after I contacted them. Where are you now? You've lied to me. Please, give me a reply. Your parents are worried that you might have passed out somewhere. Please contact me as soon as you see this message. Two hours later. Hey, what's going on? I was surprised by all the messages and calls this morning. I felt scared from all this since this morning. Are you crazy for doing all this? Hey, are you kidding me? What's going on? Do you have to contact me this much? Don't you remember what day this is today? I have no idea what you're talking about. You've been acting weird all day. Let's just have fun. You're so angry. I'll ask you again. What day is today? I already told you what day it is. Are you still drunk? I'm not drunk, but yesterday was such a fun night. It was like being in a dream. The whole place was decorated and I was the star. I felt like a princess. I hate to interrupt your dream, but I have to say something. Today was supposed to be a special day. Today was our wedding day. Oh, it was our wedding day. I didn't realize. I don't know who is getting married, but congratulations to them. Hey, are you serious? This is not a joke. Seriously, stop saying things that don't make sense. Anyway, listen to me. My story is more interesting. My colleagues splurged on amazing drinks last night. Everyone treated me like a princess, and the drinks were so good, so I ended up drinking too much. That's why I don't really remember much about last night. 
It was like I was dreaming, and then I realized, guess where I was? In an unknown capsule hotel. I don't even remember how I checked in, but I woke up in a bed this morning. See, it's funny. Human instincts are amazing, aren't they? Are you done talking about being drunk? You seem to have so much fun that you even forgot about me and our parents. You've been unbearable since earlier today. You have a bad habit of talking about the past like that. I believed in your words from yesterday. I was worried you might have passed out somewhere, so I couldn't set down my phone. Now I'm disgusted with myself and angry more than anything. Are you done preaching? What? You ruined my good mood for nothing. I didn't contact you to hear you lecture me. I replied to your persistent messages even though I'm still not sober. You should treat people around you with more respect. Hey, hey, do you even realize what you're saying? You're incredibly rude. The only way to forget unpleasant things is to go back to sleep. Wait a minute. Are you serious about going to sleep now? Well, I'm sleepy. There's nothing more important than sleep right now. Good night. Please, cool down while I'm sleeping. Wait a minute. This is our wedding day. Do you even know what you're saying right now? That's why I'll say it again. I'm sleepy. I was feeling so good until I was awakened by a ton of scary messages. This is not a time to joke around. Do you even know what time it is right now? Good night. And don't call or message me so much to wake me up like that again, okay? I don't even care anymore about what happened. One hour later. Good morning. I'm finally starting to feel clear-headed. Where do you think I was when I woke up? I was in a capsule hotel I had never seen before. Oh, good morning. You seem to be in a good mood after sleeping in twice. Last night was amazing. It's like there really are dreamlike scenes. Oh, did I tell you this story already? I feel like we talked about what day it was today before going to bed. But I really don't understand. So what day is it today after all? I do remember some things from that conversation. Well, then, try to remember what day it is now. Hmm, I don't know. I feel like you were really anxious in my dream, though. Oh, I see. Surprisingly, even when you're drunk, some things stick in your memory. Well, then, try to remember what day it really is today. What's with the attitude? Are you being sarcastic again? Well, I'm in a good mood now, so I might forgive you. But in exchange, please don't give me any trouble. All right, here's a hint. Where do you think I am and what am I doing right now? How should I know that? Oh, right, that was rude of me. But I don't think I could say something like that if I remembered properly. I mean, you're the one who would forget what day it is today. You really have a bad attitude today, don't you? I'm being generous by forgiving you. But if it were another girl, she would have been furious by now. You should be grateful for my kindness. You think you're a kind person? Stop joking around. Look back at your messages from this morning. You haven't said a single kind word to me. Yeah, you're right. But I've always had high expectations for you and have been let down. So maybe that's why I act that way. Ugh. What's your deal since earlier? I only contacted you because you were persistent and I'm still hungover. 
If that's the case, let's cancel today's plans. Fine? This happened because of your sarcastic remarks to your girlfriend since this morning. Today's plan is over. Let's reschedule for next week. Today was the wedding. Well, that's good, but it's none of my business. What if you attended alone? Come to think of it, were those really your parents? They were so polite and a really wonderful couple. I was surprised. What are you talking about all of a sudden? Of course they were my parents. It's natural for them to be respectable. Your parents are truly amazing. But even those great parents shed tears in front of me, and they bowed their heads many times, too. I felt so sorry for them. What do you mean by shedding tears? You didn't do anything bad to my parents, did you? If you did, I will never forgive you. Anyway, you always act like that. You're always so boring and sarcastic. No wonder my kind parents would feel like crying in front of you. Is this the kind of man who's going to be our daughter's fiancé? I see. So that's how you really feel about me. This is going to resolve what I've been wondering about for a while. Now I can finally sort out my own feelings. Yeah, I'm so tired of always being lectured as if I'm always wrong. I just want to live freely and happily. The wedding is off. Huh? Wait a minute. What do you mean it's off? Are you talking about someone else's wedding when you say wedding all the time? Are you still saying things like that at this point? I'm amazed. Hey, what do you mean? I've been saying it all along. Today is our wedding. Come to think of it, you've been saying something about a wedding all the time. If you're not a guest, then... Oh, that's right. Today is our wedding day. That's it. That's why we celebrated yesterday. I finally remembered. Finally? Despite today being an important day for us, you chose to drink and let loose, and you even lied not only to me but to your parents, saying you'd be back soon. I asked you so many times, didn't I? Are you okay? Can you come back? You said you were fine. I believed your words. That's right. Why did I forget something so important like that? You said it yourself. Believe that it's okay. Because I believe that, I had the experience of my fiancé drinking too much and missing our wedding. I realize that for you, the wedding is just a trivial matter. That's not true. What's not true? Everything I said is true, isn't it? I apologize if it's about drinking too much. It was just that I went a bit overboard, thinking it was a special night before my last night as a single woman. If everyone hadn't recommended such awesome drinks to me, I could have gone home earlier. So you're saying that your colleagues who celebrated with you are responsible for you missing our wedding? I'm really disappointed. Please, let me make it up to you now. I'm truly sorry from the bottom of my heart for keeping you waiting. I was really looking forward to the wedding. Do you know why? Because I love you with all my heart. I already know your true feelings from earlier. I'll go to my parents' house right now and bring them there. It's okay. They were really looking forward to this day, too. They might complain a little, but in the end, they'll be thrilled to come. You worked so hard to wake me up because you wanted to have the wedding with me, right? Can you stop saying the same thing over and over again? The wedding has been canceled. You're too quick to be cautious now and give up. Please wait a bit, because I'm about to leave the hotel. 
You don't seem to fully understand, so I'll be clear this time. The wedding is canceled. Even though I told you you don't remember anything about the wedding. On top of that, when you were drunk and said I'm going to sleep again, I couldn't believe my ears. And yet you didn't wake up for a long time, did you? Do you really think we can still have a wedding at this point? I'm really sorry. I always do things innocently without any ill will. It's entirely my fault that time passed and I overslept. If today doesn't work out, let's postpone it until next week. Are you serious about that? There's no way we can do that. Don't give up. Ask the staff at the venue first. Weren't you looking forward to getting married to me, too? I'm going to my parents' house now to bring them there. Even if we can't do it today and have to postpone, I'll let them know that all you have to do is arrange with the venue. You don't know how hard it was for me to reserve this venue. It's not just the venue. I managed to find a popular planner who can fulfill your wishes. We only had one day for our wedding. I understand how much you were looking forward to today. It doesn't matter if it's not there. We can find another place to have our wedding. It seems like my true intentions haven't been conveyed clearly, so let me be more direct. I'm breaking off our engagement. In other words, I will never marry you. And I mean it. Wait a minute. This isn't like you to be so irrational. Our love can't be broken just because of a little tardiness, can it? You can say that it was just a little delay, but that's not all. You got drunk and missed our wedding, and you even forgot that today was your own wedding day. I can't commit my life to someone like that. I can't trust you at all. No, that's a lie. It's a bad joke. And I forgot to tell you, your parents accepted the cancellation of our engagement. What? I can't believe my parents would agree to that. My parents wanted me to be happy and were looking forward to the wedding. They never imagined that their daughter would ghost the wedding, her own wedding, by getting drunk. Your parents, who heard you forgot about the wedding and overslept, sincerely apologized to me. But why are you blaming me like this? I just got a little too happy and drank too much. I never intended to not show up for the wedding. And why are you making my parents apologize to you? You are really starting to seem like a mean person. I didn't demand an apology from them. Your parents came and apologized for their daughter's shameful behavior. They even apologized and begged for our engagement to be canceled. My parents have a terrible misunderstanding of things. Say something like, I'm not that kind of daughter. Misunderstanding? There is no misunderstanding. You didn't even bother to ask me why it happened several times, and you just kept talking about last night's drinking. And to top it all off, you told me not to lecture you? Stop looking down on me and making fun of me. I'm so confused by all this suddenness. I truly believe that I've done something wrong to you from the bottom of my heart. It's true that I love you with all my heart. Is drinking to the point of forgetting your important wedding day with your beloved something that should happen? Was the wedding nothing more than something like that to you? Anyway, I'm going to the wedding hall with my parents right now. If we talk face to face, I'm sure you'll remember how much we love each other. Please, wait just a little while. I'm going there right now. Please. You're probably in a place where you don't even know where you are, right? There's nothing for me to talk about to you. 
My feelings won't change at all. It's a lifelong request. Besides, neither me nor my parents can let it end like this. Let's talk about the future with my parents involved. If you're going to say that much, I'll wait a little. But I'm not waiting for you. It's to ease the pain of your kind and wonderful parents. My decision to break off the engagement with you hasn't changed. You'll surely change your mind once you meet me. I'll hurry and come see you. So wait without moving until I arrive. One hour later. Still not here yet. It's been over an hour since your last message. Did you break your promise again? Your parents arrived right after that. I've been apologizing to your parents since then. I was foolish to trust you. I'm sorry. I have some trouble and can't come right away. What? You made me wait this long and now you can't even come? What are you talking about? How far are you going to underestimate people? This is really different. It is true. I tried to head to the wedding venue like I promised, but I really couldn't make it. If you hear the reason, you'll definitely understand, too. Explain it properly. I'll hear your last excuse. Your parents are here, too. I left the hotel right away, but I got caught up in trouble. I'm at the hospital right now. Hospital? I was in a hurry and got into an accident, and now I'm receiving treatment. If you think that's a lie, I'll have the hospital staff prove it to you from my phone. What's going on? I wanted to see you as soon as possible, but the venue was farther away from the capsule hotel than I thought. I didn't have enough money to take a taxi, and public transportation would have taken too long. But then I remembered that a friend of mine lives nearby, so I begged her and managed to borrow a motorcycle. So you drove an unfamiliar motorcycle in a hurry, and that's how you got into a traffic accident and were taken to the hospital? Exactly. It all happened because I wanted to respond to your love. I wanted to see you, hug you, and clear up the misunderstanding. But love can be cruel sometimes. I was taken to the hospital by a rescue team, and they told me I had a broken right leg. That's unfortunate. Your friend who lent you the bike is probably regretting it by now. It's really audacious of me to ask for a favor after making you wait like that. Is it possible for you and our parents to come to this hospital? What are you thinking, really? I'm tired of hearing your bad jokes. If your parents were truly worried about you, I might understand. But why should I go out of my way to come and see you? I was so desperate to think that you were waiting for me. I don't think I could have done all of this if I didn't truly love you. Can't you understand my feelings? Well, it's a pity you got injured. The hospital staff who have to take care of you must be having a hard time, too. The fracture is severe, so it looks like I'll have to rest in bed for a while. I think this is a message from God telling us that the wedding cannot take place today anyway. No, that's definitely not it. If you hadn't drunk too much the night before and forgotten about the wedding, you wouldn't have needed to ride the bike in the first place. If you didn't have to ride the bike, your friend's bike wouldn't have broken down and you wouldn't have gotten injured. It's because of my love for you that I said these things. Don't you think it's cruel to make your sweet girlfriend say things like that? There's one thing I'm certain of now. Good, I'm glad. You finally realize how much I love you. I'm glad I decided to break off our engagement. A woman who is reckless, unplanned, and ignores other people's feelings cannot be called a partner. 
I despise people who force their feelings onto others and drag them into their problems. There is only one thing I'm grateful for. I found out about your true nature before our wedding. If you think about it, this incident was a good lesson that prevented my life from being messed up. Be honest with me. You shouldn't really be thinking about breaking off our engagement. I've already told you many times I'm breaking off our engagement. We're supposed to be the ones who promised to get married. And on top of that, I got into an accident trying to come to see you. I broke bones and I'm injured and unable to move for a while. You should be grateful. You should be thankful that you even survived the motorcycle accident. Besides, this experience should have been good medicine for you. That's not good at all. Despite this, it was to be a joyous occasion. I feel terrible. Do you know how many times you failed and made a fool of yourself because of alcohol? You're the type of person who causes big trouble when you get drunk. If you've learned your lesson, then drink in moderation from now on. I get that you're angry enough already. From now on, I won't even drink anymore. I'm truly sorry what happened this time. So won't you give me one last chance? I want you to stay with me, at least until I recover from my injuries. Let's start over again, just the two of us. When I think about what's to come, I feel so lonely and anxious right now. I'm sorry, but I have to refuse. Why should I, a stranger, be the one to stay by your side? There are medical professionals in the hospital, aren't there? I'm not your personal caregiver. Besides, I have to proceed with canceling our engagement. Since you can't move, I'll take care of it from here. If your signature is required, I'll let you know, and I'll take care of it. So please don't worry. Why does it have to be like this? We made a vow to each other to get married. Are you just going to abandon me so easily after I got hurt? Even though I'm apologizing to you like this. If you're an adult, you should let this go and come hug me. I'm sorry, but we can't discuss this between us. It's getting out of hand. So if you contact me directly from now on, please be aware that I will have a lawyer present. What? A lawyer? Hey, are we really going to end things like this? Wait a minute. Let's calm down. We still have time to make this work. Yeah, I wish it could have worked out. But you didn't just miss the wedding. You forgot about it, didn't you? Before you drink yourself into oblivion, I wanted you to think about what really matters to you. Please, don't let this in. Hey, please, answer me. Thereafter. Catherine resisted quite a bit, but we ended up breaking off the engagement. After that, Catherine was apparently severely scolded by her parents and relatives. There was a cancellation fee for the venue, but Catherine's parents offered to pay it, so I didn't have to. Catherine's parents apparently even signed a contract with her to repay the entire amount. Not only for the wedding cancellation fee, but also for the damages caused by our friend's broken bike. They are naturally being sued for compensation. Afterwards, Catherine apparently also lost her job. It seems she had already used up all her vacation pay. In addition, it seems she repeatedly showed up late or missed work due to drinking too much. It might be accurate to say that alcohol really ruined her life. She ran out of money and was forced to leave her apartment. Now she's living at home. Not only was she fired from her job, but apparently she can't even do household chores and her parents lecture her every day. Her parents are kind enough to let her stay at home, but they said that as soon as she recovers from her injury, they will kick her out and she's begging them not to. 
but I hope this experience will make her naturally run towards sobriety. She shouldn't make the same mistakes in her life and hurt someone else when she walks her path in the future. I want her to be happy and not cause trouble for anyone. Meanwhile, as for me, actually I hit it off with a classmate I met after a long time, and our romance is about to begin. Since our relationship has just started, we're not thinking about marriage yet, but it's a fact that I'm feeling a bit cautious. There is one thing I can be sure about, though. That's because my girlfriend is someone who doesn't drink alcohol at all. So she won't have to suffer from losing important time due to drinking too much and getting hurt because of it. I sincerely hope that she won't encounter similar troubles in the future. Hey! What's going on? Don't call me like that. Listen, everything is gone from our house. Literally everything. What's going on? My watch is gone too. I'll call the police now, but I wanted to let you know first. Your favorite rocking chair is gone too. Oh yeah, no need to call the police. What? What do you mean? Your stuff is gone too. Yeah, sure. I sold it all. I make good money, you know. Hold on. I'm not following. What do you mean? You sold everything? How are we gonna live? Hulk, we are done. I have no feelings for you. We should get divorced. That's it? You should have told me if something was bothering you. I told you, that's not it. I just don't love you anymore. Give me a sec, Leah. That's very selfish. I could understand that you wanted a divorce. I'm responsible for not holding your feelings close to me. But you sold everything including my stuff that I need. They were my precious items. How could you do this? Whatever. They are common property. I can sell them off if I want to. Anyway, I'm proceeding with our divorce, so be aware. What were you not happy about with me? You should have told me. I need to see you and talk. Please, Leah. Did you not hear? I have nothing to talk about, Hulk. If you insist, we will see each other in court. Bye. Leah. Please reply. Leah! Next day. Leah, I understand you. I can't hold on to you if you have no feelings for me anymore. I'm ready to discuss our divorce. Please respond. Okay. I don't want to take extra time on our divorce suit. So, what's your thought? Is it something I can accept? We'll divide our property evenly. I'll forgive that you sold my stuff without my consent. The house... You won't need it, will you? So I'll take it. Instead, you can get more cash. That should be a good deal for you. Wait, why would we divide our property evenly? You forgot one important factor to count in. Important factor? What is that? You forgot the personal value of you and I. Say that again? What are you saying? Only I can manage a marriage with someone as boring as you. Meanwhile, many guys approached me. More than a dozen. This fact can tell you who has more personal value, right, stupid? Appearance is not the only factor to decide personal value. Yeah, every boring person says that. You should be thankful that you were married to someone beautiful like me, even for a short period. That's why I should get more than half. You should pay and be thankful. God freaking damn. It sounds like I asked you to marry me. Actually, it was all you. You asked me to go out and marry you. You chose me. It was because I felt sorry for you being ignored by everyone. I follow humanitarianism, so I couldn't have pity and then leave you. You want to speak down to me at all costs. Don't forget that you lied to me when you asked me to marry you. Oh, damn, you remember. You remember too. Yes, you lied that you were pregnant to marry me. You used stuffing to look like a pregnant woman. I agreed to marry you feeling responsible. I had to laugh at your face turning pale. I just couldn't believe that there was such a naive person. I was shocked looking at you after our wedding. Your belly was flat. Anyway, it was you that wanted this marriage. You put in all this effort. It's funny how you misinterpret things, you boring man. Listen, I was helping you out since it would take years for you to take any action. You could have done better. Better than scamming me. 
You could thank me rather than blame me. You couldn't have proposed to me in a different situation. Not that I couldn't. I didn't. Okay, if you say so. But you remember every single detail. You've always been like that. Persistent like a girl. Don't you have balls? This is about a marriage proposal, not a general small thing. And what you did was a scam. Face the reality. Shut up. You always blame me like that. You don't do anything to make me happy, but you do blame me easily. Well then, did you do anything to make me happy? I am not. You feel the blame because you know that's right. Here again! This is why I don't love you anymore. See? You were responsible for this divorce, so I have a right to get more property. Okay, I hear what you're saying. This would justify cheating, correct? Cheating? What are you talking about? Look, if you do dirty texts with him in front of me or talk loud over the phone, anyone can notice. I chose not to tell you. I waited to collect good evidence of your cheating. What a coward! You've been planning behind me? This isn't fair. This is why I want a divorce. So you admit you've been cheating. How can you blame me while you've cheated on me? What nerve have you got? You know everything, don't you, coward? You blame me only when you have solid evidence. Yeah, I don't want to make false accusations. Whatever. My boyfriend, he smiles and does everything I ask, while you keep blaming me forever. That's only because you ask something crazy, like jewelry that costs me a couple thousand. I wonder how long he will stay around. He'll be fine. He is very kind. He's very masculine, very wild. What a difference from you, girly Hulk. And he proposed to me in a very romantic way. Sure, I was getting proposed to by you. I felt almost threatened. I had no time to come up with a romantic proposal. So, I'll say yes to him. I finally found my man. You are done. I sold our property to compensate for my life that was ruined just by being with you. It was my life that was ruined, not yours. Enough. I'll accept even distribution of our property. So, let's get to the divorce by agreement. I don't want it to take long. How can you be so self-centered? We need to discuss. And does he really love you? Of course. I can tell he loves me by how he treats me. Just get it done. I will sign once the document is ready. Okay, I've had enough with you. Well, I will enjoy my new life with my new husband. Go ahead. I'll never talk with you again. Bye. I'll keep your contact until our divorce is settled. Goodbye. Two weeks later. Hi, Hulk. It's been a while. Leah, how is your new life with your new husband going? I thought you'd never talk to me. Yeah, about that. I had second thoughts. About what? There shouldn't be anything you'd have second thoughts about. Of course, about our divorce. I just realized that you truly loved me after we got separated. Being kind is not the only way to love someone. I now appreciate your strictness with love. You sound completely different now. What's going on? Sure, I remembered my love to you. Let's hold our divorce mediation. I'll get our property back. So, can we get back together? Unfortunately, we are done. Also, I know what's going on. Uh, what do you mean? I just love you. Stop it. You're in trouble because he's been arrested for marriage fraud. How did you know? Leah, you literally had no interest in me. Forgot what I do? Oh, I remember. How can I forget? You were a detective. A very capable kind, right? Good job, Leah. Now why do you think he's been arrested? And why do you think I know? Why? Oh, don't tell me. You knew he's a scammer? You knew and didn't tell me? How could you? Of course I would if he was the one. Not sure if you'd have believed me. I just learned you were one of his targets last week. My colleague arrested him, and I learned that you were involved. It was more than a surprise when I saw your name on the list of victims. My colleague was surprised, too. He was very uncomfortable to let me know. You were too slow to arrest him. You should have noticed that I've been cheated. How can you be a detective like that? If you found out earlier, I'd not be here. I was not in charge. And how can someone imagine that the wife of a detective was cheated on? You should be responsible. Where's your mindset as a detective? Wow. 
I didn't expect you to tell me about the mindset of being a detective. You must have gone through so much trouble. He started to demand money once I decided to get divorced with you. He said he really needed to get married. Of course I trusted him. How could I imagine he was lying? You might think you are smart, but actually you are not. Shut up! I gave him money and he soon disappeared. I tried to find him, and the police contacted me to tell me he was a scammer. Then he was already arrested. I can't believe it. I can't believe you were telling me things like that. Plus, of course you'd complain if I check on him, being cowardly or girly. That's not true. If you did, I'd be proud of you as a man. You told me you didn't love me anymore. I lost my feelings for you a long time ago. No, I was tricked. I did nothing wrong. Please forgive me. I'll do anything. You name it, so please. What I want from you is just one thing. Do not show up again. I'll proceed with our divorce mediation even if it requires getting a court involved. No! I'm begging you! You think I'll forgive you just because you ask? This means you didn't learn your lesson. This time it was a scam, but it's very likely that you'll cheat again. In fact, you cheated on me. How can you prove that you'll never cheat again? Of course, I swear that I love you. Only you. Oh, really? By the way, where are you right now? Uh, at my friend's. I had nowhere to go. You didn't tell me an important fact. Your boyfriend, right? Seems like you were up late last night. How do you know that? Were you stalking me? Damn, you are persistent. Who'd be stalking? No way. I hired someone to investigate. We are having a divorce mediation. Of course you'd want to investigate. And I was pretty much sure that you'd been cheating. What made you think that way? You thought I was a bitch? Because I knew you had relationships with several guys before we started dating. That... That shouldn't matter. It was before us. You kept those relationships even after we started dating. How do you know? People have loose tongues. I married you since you'd been persuasive, but I wanted to end us before it's too late. Thinking back, I made a huge mistake. I should have confirmed if you were truly pregnant. No more mistakes. Divorce is a must. Another thing. Return my watch that you sold with other properties, please. Your watch? Yeah, I got a good price. That watch costs more than 10k, and I bought that watch before I got married. It means the watch belongs to me, so you'll be charged for theft. Wait a minute. Are you going to sue your wife? You are not my wife anymore. You're a criminal, and I have a right to arrest you as a detective. But I can give you mercy. I won't arrest you if you return the watch or pay me back the money. I don't have money. The scammer took all my money. You gave me the hard choices knowing I couldn't pay you back. That's your problem, not mine. You have two choices. You'll be arrested by your husband now, or pay me back, even little by little. No, no. Let's hold the divorce mediation and continue our marriage. Then I don't have to pay you back and you can regain your beautiful wife. Everyone is happy. I don't value appearance. Personality matters. In that sense, you are very ugly. I can tell what an ugly personality you have. Leah, I gave you the two choices. There is no third one. But wouldn't you be happy if I came back? I can do many things for you. Handling all the house chores is hard, right? And we can spend great nights together. You didn't do much of the house chores. You did takeout rather than cooking. I've had your handmade food only a couple times. Don't worry about my nightlife. I am happier without you. So, which will you choose? Choices. Arrest or pay back? Should I decide it for you? Of course arrest. I am a detective. Wait, I'll pay back the money. I'll pay back little by little every month. So let's meet up to discuss. We don't need to meet up. The discussion is done. No, just once, please. Goodbye, Leah. If I see you again, it'll be when I arrest you. I'll block you. You can find your man without me, coward. Bye. Thereafter. Leah paid for a couple of months, but one day the payments stopped. I wondered why and investigated. She tried the same trick with another guy to marry him and take his money. But he discovered her pregnancy was a lie before their marriage. She was arrested for marriage fraud. Her lie was revealed since she dropped her stuffing while walking. I feel ashamed that such a woman was once my wife. 
My colleague told me she doesn't feel bad, and she keeps rambling that she was cheated on and she wants pity. She doesn't behave in jail, so she needs a while in there. On the other hand, I'm living my life free from her. I moved, so she won't find me even when she gets out of jail. And I'm in a relationship with a calm and thoughtful lady. I'm determined to be happier compensating for the time I had to deal with Leah. Hi, Clarice. Got a moment? Gotta tell you something important. Sure, what's up? We can talk when I get back, too. Nah, it's something difficult to tell in face-to-face. -face. I... I fell in love with someone else. What did you say? I found my soulmate at work, so I need to break up with you. I don't understand, Rodri. Let's talk in person, not by text. I am so sorry, but I just fell in love with Maureen. Maureen? Who the heck are you talking about? She is new at work, young and fresh, in her 20s. I can be very energetic with her, and she has the best smile. That's too much. Do you understand how old you are? Turning 60 this year. I haven't forgotten my age, yet. There surely is an age difference, yet I fell in love with her. We believe that we can overcome a small age difference with love. I gotta tell you, Rodri, passion is your strength. But don't you think it's about time for you to settle down? To be straight to the point, aren't you ashamed of yourself talking about love with a chick? I understand your disagreement. We were together for a long time. But, Clarice, I have a reason. What reason? Enough to justify you cheating on me? Yes, I believe so. Our children are all grown up. Ever since, we haven't made love, have we? What do I mean to you? Just an ATM to bring money? Let me ask then. Have you taken any action? I can't remember. Slack skin full of wrinkles? How can I be attracted to that? It was her who understood my struggles. Once I slept with her, I couldn't stand looking at you. There is only one thing I ask. Please free me. Fine. I was foolish enough not to realize you were this short-sighted. Well then, I'll prepare the documents. Once we agree on division of property, that will be it. Hold on. Things aren't so easy. I will demand the compensation. What? How am I supposed to pay you compensation? Don't tell me it's just because I cheated on you, is it? You can't demand compensation for being cheated on. No, I demand compensation for a DV. A DV? When did I get violent? DV includes verbal violence. You just told me that I have slack skin full of wrinkles. I was offended. I've got evidence, so shouldn't it be regarded as DV? We will separate after I receive a full compensation. You sound very desperate since you only have a sideline, huh? You won't be able to live without my income. Don't worry, you'll get alimony support. Of course. Plus, I will receive compensation on top of it. Don't even think about hiring a lawyer. I don't want to pay for it for any case. I'm offering an even division of property with someone who only has a side job. Isn't that generous enough? Not at all. I am entitled to more. Well, I'll pretend as if I didn't hear anything about compensation. And Maureen wants to live in this house. She loves it. I bought this house with my own money, so I should get it. I'll look for a place for you to live within your small budget, so don't worry about it. You'll get some cash from the division of property. Nothing to complain about, right? Oh my god, how did you get those intrusive thoughts? I can't talk with you anymore. Give me her number, I will talk with her. Are you going to tell her anything offensive? Much better words than what's coming out of your very mouth. That's not a very nice way to say it, but okay. I'll talk with her first. Give me some time. Fine. Don't waste a second. One hour later. Hi there, this is Maureen, new wife of Rodri speaking. Maureen? Sounds much shallower than I thought. Oh, are you jealous? I end up stealing your husband. I'm too attractive. I feel bad, ma'am. Oh no, old hag. Ah, don't you mind that he is as old as your father? Of course not. There is no other man who is as dandy as he is. Dandy? Are you blind? He is ignorant, has middle-aged flab. I can't believe myself picking him up as a partner. Between you and me, why did you pick him? Of course you can tell, huh? That guy is rich with a gorgeous house. Naive enough to fall for me after a couple of nights together. 
Perfect for me, who wants an early retirement and a good life. He said something about love? Sure, I'll love him while he has money. How true or fake the love is, that depends on if you believe it. Maybe you are right. At least he believed it. You have an ill-favored personality like him. Be happier, just two of a kind. How are you feeling? I have taken everything away. Money, house, and your man. He told me that you can't afford a lawyer. That's very petty of you. I forgive your sour grape attitude. Thank you, I guess? Anyway, just leave at once. This will be my house. Two days later. Rodri told me you are still at my house. Give up already and leave. You don't belong there anymore. I will if you compensate me. And why am I supposed to do so, huh? Rodri bought that house. He doesn't know you anything. Don't tell me this is yours since you live in it, please. Rodri didn't tell you everything, did he? What do you mean? Stop the nonsense. The house we live in was a second house in the market for a long time. When we bought it, the floor creaked and the doorknobs were broken. Terrible condition. He didn't tell me. Of course he wouldn't tell you something like that. We tried, but we couldn't stand it any longer. So we decided to renovate the house. But he didn't have money. Thinking back, he must have been spending his money on you. So I paid for renovation. Rodri must be misunderstanding. But how could you afford it? You, an old woman, can't seduce a rich man. No way! Don't confuse me with you. I inherited from my father. I used some of the money. Well, I spent more than ten times what it cost originally. So I possess the house, and if you want to take over it, you need to pay what it cost me to renovate it. Doesn't make any sense. The even division of property is the thing. Yes, so I will not release the possession unless he pays me the price. Well then, let's discuss during the divorce mediation whose house it is. He can hire a very famous lawyer with his money. On the contrast, you poor woman, you don't have much inheritance left, do you? Just give up and leave. I know you were doing this to harass me. Or you fight by yourself. That can be something. You're stupid. I'm in touch with a great lawyer already. A specialist of divorce mediation. What? No way. How can you afford it with your side job? Must be a bluff. He might have believed it's a sideline. What do you mean? I never had a sideline. I have the inheritance from my father. It's not smart if you just use it. I don't understand. What are you saying? I invested the money I received, so I've saved up quite a lot. Huh. A bluff again. You can say whatever. He never told me that you have money. If you do, he would be careful. Oh, you were smarter than him at least. He may be hiding it from you, but he spends money lavishly. That's why he's always broke. He called me that he couldn't pay at a bar the other day. I paid it off, but I told him not to count on my money. What about him being rich? He earns a lot of money, but uses almost double of what he earns. I can't imagine him thinking about insurance or asset management. Then what's the point of getting married with him? I was into it because he always talks about a huge amount of money he has, but it means nothing if he wastes it. Plus, the gorgeous house is yours. I can't marry the poor old man. Marine, I feel sorry for you, but he won't give up easily. Be happy with a mere poor old man without money nor a house. Don't expect alimony. We lived on his income. I shouldn't be liable. No way. I'm sorry, Clarice. I didn't mean to break down your relationship. I mean, it's not too late. I'll help you, right? Everyone will be happy. Clarice, please respond. Please. Five days later. <coughs> Clarice, it's me. Your beloved husband, Rodri. I just realized I've only loved you, Clarice. Can we start over? Can you let me come back first? You left on your will. Where is Maureen, your soulmate? Go ahead and build up your own sweet home with her. I can't get a hold of her. I was staying at her place until three days ago, but then she started to call me a liar and kicked me out. A liar? Have you been lying to her? How dare you? You told her everything. I don't know what you told her, but this is what she said at the end. I'm sorry, but I have no interest in a poor old liar. My love ends as soon as your money runs out. Good luck finding a new soulmate. 
I can't text her. She blocked me. She left work and I can't find her. I went to her apartment, but she hasn't come back and no response. My money ran out because I spent it on her. Trying to cut me off now. She is such a bitch. Why do I have to hear your story? How dare you text me? Tell me. After she kicked me out, I was staying at a cheap hotel. I can't afford it anymore. I came back believing in you. How helpless. What made you think that I would help you? Since we are in love. You ended it. Anything between us is over. Nothing. I knew you didn't have money on you, but it was because of Maureen. Why would I start over with the guy who spent money on some bitch? You won't learn your lesson. No, this won't happen again. I swear, I will only love you. Can you believe in me just one more time? Sad to say, but you've never done anything I can believe in you for. I regret that I was married to you. You've been financing some bitch, and how could you be a backseat driver? You are the worst. Now get out of my life for good. How dare you? I've just been nice to you, don't get me wrong. You've never told me about your inheritance from your father. And you've never told me about investing it. Were you hiding something? You've been financing a young man when I'm at work for us? You're no different than me. You picked up a young man. How can you make all that up? I've never done such a thing. I've been saving up for someone who spends money like water so that we can sustain our quality of life in later years. If I had told you about the inheritance, what would have happened? You'd have used it all. That's why I didn't tell you. Well... Actually, there were times when I had to cover up for living expenses. Not once or twice. I've been doing it, but you've never noticed. Why didn't you tell me? I would be careful. Can't you just imagine what will happen if you use up all the savings? Also, I didn't tell you to protect your confidence. You had a strong pride that you were supporting us. I... had no idea. Clarice, I didn't realize that you've been this thoughtful. Please forgive me. You are my soulmate after all. Now I see the true love. How funny. I've been covering up the living expenses for our children. I didn't want them to know how helpless their father was. I tried not to damage your pride because you could take it out on them. I would never. How do you know? Plus, I didn't want our children to suffer because of you. They have their families now. We don't have to worry about them when we separate. There is no need to continue this marriage. You cheated on me. That dried up my last remaining feeling. I'm so ready for divorce. I've been thinking about it no matter what. I've told my children and they are totally on my side. Cheating is the worst you could have done. They've noticed that you were not a respectful person at all. No way. Hold on, Clarice. We've been together for all these years. Please, Clarice, help me. You were the one who left a years-long partnership to be with a young woman. I'm telling you, I have no feelings for you. Not even an inch. No. No reason to help you. I just know you by name. I'm ready for the divorce mediation with my lawyer. You have a right to say whatever you need to say during the divorce mediation. Whether they will listen is another story. Don't worry, I will demand an even division of property based on your income. Of course, I will get the alimony support. I am the poor woman with a side job in the end. I will enjoy my life in this house with my children. You should go ahead and find a new soulmate. No, wait, please. It's all Maureen's fault. She seduced me. We can start over now. You and I still have feelings. Clarice, I can't imagine a life without you. You are my everything. I'd be better off without knowing you. Give the creepy sweet nothings to someone else out there. Well then, goodbye. God, wait. Clarice. Thereafter. The divorce mediation started, but our claims did not meet. But since my lawyer was the specialist of divorce mediation, my claims were accepted in most cases, and I was able to demand the compensation with the evidence of DV. Roderick came to my house many times after divorce mediation was done, wanting to go back with me and to be exempted from the compensation. I called the police right away, as I am not part of it. Since then, he never comes back, and my life has been peaceful. By contrast, Rodri and Maureen were tired. Maureen from not showing up to run away, Rodri from severe complaints from a regular customer about showing up dressed like a homeless person. Maureen could not run away from her work and is now liable for compensation because of the huge damage she caused on an important project. Well, she brought all of it on herself. 
Rodri is looking for a job, but seems to be struggling due to his age and his pride. He once asked our children for support, but no one cared since I told them everything. I am happy at my own house, with my children and grandchildren visiting me from time to time. Renee, you used my car without permission, didn't you? I just received it, and there are mud stains on it. How can you dirty the car like this? It's the worst to drive without permission, and make the car dirty. Why did you drive without asking me? I had to take Harrison to his appointment. I'm sorry, I should have told you before borrowing the car. But I wasn't going out to have fun or anything. It was for Harrison. I just had to do it. I'm sure you understand Harrison is sickly. He is your son. He hasn't been feeling good these days, so I wanted to take him to the hospital quickly. Haven't you been worried seeing him sick like this? How should I know about that? I'm more worried about the car than Harrison. Look how dirty it is. You ruined my brand new car. Jeez. Why did you use my car? If you used it, you should have washed it clean. Can't you even do that? I can't believe that you care more about your car than your own child. You only talk about your car. I understand you're nervous because it's a new car, but didn't you think about your son? Aren't you worried about Harrison at all? Didn't you notice Harrison seemed a little unwell yesterday evening? Have you ever thought about what you would do if something happened to Harrison? Harrison has been going to the hospital for a long time. Because of his weak health, he needs to go for checkups often. You should understand that the place is not within walking distance, right? Living in a remote countryside where the air is clean is a wonderful thing, but when it comes to going to the hospital for medical treatment, the transportation system is very inconvenient. You also said that commuting to your workplace was hard, didn't you? The only hospital around here is at least a 30-minute drive even by car. It's tough for a little child to make the trip on foot. You can't walk, but there are buses, right? Then take the bus. Maybe it's hard to find the way, but you can take a bus, right? Besides, it rained yesterday, and in this rural area, mud will splash everywhere quickly. It would be worse with your lousy driving. You should understand this easily, if you think about it. Or perhaps you haven't realized that you're a lousy driver. Billy, do you know, the bus to the hospital only runs once every two hours. It's only once every three hours when we are coming back. I can't put him through that kind of stress when he's going for respiratory problems. Plus, it takes 30 minutes just to walk to the bus stop. How long do you think it would take from home to the hospital? In this rural area, there's not a lot of traffic, and the roads are rough. It's difficult to walk on such uneven roads, even for me as an adult. So how can we make Harrison walk for 30 minutes? What if something happens? An ambulance won't come right away. I don't care. Calling an ambulance will cost money. I rather worry about that. I can't afford to spend money on something like that. Even if something happens, just try to walk. Harrison might enjoy going for a walk. Maybe he's not getting better because you overprotect him. Oh, I've got a good idea. Let him walk to the hospital to train his respiratory system. If we do that, his illness might heal. In that case, we won't need to use my car, and there won't be any gas expenses. Isn't that a great thing for both Harrison and me? I'm not going to go through all that trouble, if that's all it takes to get him better. You don't know anything about the illness. Since he's sick, it's not about exercising and strengthening his body. The doctor told him to avoid exercise, and you're trying to make him walk up a mountain path for 30 minutes. Cars are there for driving in the first place. I'm going to continue taking Harrison to the hospital by car. If you were a good father, you wouldn't get so angry about just using your car. And if you're that angry, I'll pay for the gas myself. And if the car gets dirty on a rainy day, I'll wash it too. If I do all this, you won't have any complaints, will you? So I'm going to continue using your car. Goodbye. What did you say? Don't mess around. Hey, don't do whatever you want. Renee, answer me. Missed call. Hey, answer the phone, Renee. Some days later. Renee, they're delivering the car tomorrow, so please be here to receive it. Huh? A car? Did you buy a new car again? What do you mean? We don't have that much money, right? It can't be. You just don't want me to use the money for my new car. I bought the car for you to use. 
It's a used compact car, but it suits you, doesn't it? <laughs> it's great. You have a kind husband who gives you a car, even if it's used. I can't believe it. Why did you do that? We just bought a new car. Where did you get the money from? I appreciate you bought me a car, but you should just let me use your new car. But now I can take Harrison to the hospital without any hesitation. Thank you, Billy. I may have said too much the other day. I'm sorry. But if you have any trouble with money because you bought the used car, you can sell it any time. Then I'll have to use your new car again. Hey, hey, are you joking? I let you use my new car. I got it from my friend for 10,000 yen. I really don't want you guys to use the new car no matter what. Well, even so, it was only 10,000 yen. Could it be that it's because of my popularity that I was able to buy it so cheaply? Anyways, be grateful I bought it just for you to use. So make sure you ride it carefully and take good care of it. Wait a minute. 10,000? Is that a car you really can ride? Is there something wrong with the car? Now I heard the price, I started to feel scared. Don't worry, it's a 30-year-old car, and it has been in a few accidents, and sometimes black smoke comes out, but it seems like you can still ride it, so don't worry. <laughs> I'm not stupid enough to spend 10,000 yen on a car that I can't even drive at all. He said they haven't driven it for five years. You should do the maintenance before driving. The car was inexpensive, so don't spend money on maintenance. Find the cheapest place in town to do the maintenance. Billy, are you serious? Are you serious? You're not joking. I can't feel safe in such a dangerous car. I can't believe you're talking about it so calmly. Are you planning to put your wife and son in a car that could break down at any moment? Aren't you afraid of putting us in such a car? It's not just a breakdown. It could even explode and cause serious injuries. I'm too scared to even consider driving it. There's no way I'm getting in that car. It will be too late if something happens. I have never seen anyone driving a car that cost only 10,000 yen. It's such an old and beat-up car, the gas won't be cheap. I want you to return the feeling of gratitude that I had for you earlier. What? I went out of my way to ask my friend to let us have it. Are you saying you're not happy with my kindness? There's no way it's going to explode. You're overthinking it. You say it will be too late if something happens, but don't just assume that something will happen. Even if it's cheap, cars don't just break down easily. I got it for you because you said you needed a car to go to the hospital. What do you mean, return the feeling of gratitude? Don't you have any compassion or consideration for others? You're the one without compassion. You care more about your car than putting us in a beat-up car that could break down at any moment. You're willing to provide such a dangerous car just because you don't want us to ride in a new car. Do you even know how much you earn? We barely make enough to get by and save a little. What's the point of spending 10,000 yen on a beat-up car, paying for gas, and spending money on maintenance? It's financially difficult to have two cars, even if they're cheap. And let's be real, your salary isn't enough to be driving around in a luxury car. Do you really need to be driving around in a car that's way too expensive for your income? It just doesn't make sense for you to be the only one driving around in a new car alone that doesn't even match your class. It makes more sense for us to also use your car when needed. If there's a good reason for your decision, please explain it clearly. Hey, hey, this is why women have a hard time. You know what I mean? Listen, cars are about romanticism. They're not just a means of transportation. That's why you always have to keep your car clean. The appearance is important. Plus, I don't want to show any sense of living in my car. I want to drive in a cool car with full speed in the streets. Once I hit the streets, I can show off my cool car. For guys, it's a status symbol, so it's necessary to ride a good car, no matter what, and good cars also choose their riders. If you ride a good car, you'll be respected by those around you, and if you're respected, you'll be closer to promotion. That's something only men can understand about each other. There are only male bosses at my company. But as women, 
you wouldn't understand any of that, and there's no need for you to interfere. You don't even understand the value of a car, so just ride the used car I got for you. If you have a problem, then go to the hospital by bus or walk there. And if anything happens, don't you dare use a taxi or an ambulance. You're the worst. You should think more about your children. Even if not for me. Before talking about the romanticism of men and cars, you should talk about parenting. Besides, it's more embarrassing to ride in a luxury car when you don't have money. To me, you just seem like someone showing off. Your ideas are just like an ungrown man's. I don't want to listen to such a ridiculous romanticism that sacrifices your own children. Next day. Hey, didn't I tell you not to drive my new car again? I saw new equipment I didn't put in there. I told you to drive the used car, didn't I? What was the point of buying a used car then? Don't get so angry. I want you to listen to me before getting angry. I just installed an air purifier because you smoke too much. Harrison has respiratory problems. Smoking is just as harmful as poison. I already told you this before, but Harrison hasn't been feeling well lately, right? That's why I want to do everything I can to improve Harrison's breathing. Even if you don't smoke, the smell of smoke can stick to things, and the lingering smell can make it hard to breathe. I've wanted to say this for a while now. I want you to quit smoking. Smoking two boxes of cigarettes a day is too much money, you know? Just quitting smoking would save us money. Plus, every time you go to buy cigarettes, you end up wasting money on coffee and snacks. We would save a lot of money if you stopped spending on cigarettes, coffee, and snacks every day. Since we already have the air purifier installed, isn't this a good time to try to quit smoking? How about trying to quit smoking from now on? Hey, don't go on talking as if you know everything. Why do I have to quit smoking? How many things do you need to take away from me before you're satisfied? You keep telling me to use the old car and quit smoking. You're always trying to make me the only one to sacrifice. I never asked for an air purifier either. You just went ahead and installed it without my permission and act like you're doing me a favor. It's my car and you keep doing all sorts of things without asking. You didn't give birth to Harrison as a stronger child, and that's why we're dealing with this trouble now. If Harrison hadn't gotten sick, we wouldn't be dealing with this, yet I'm the only one having to make sacrifices. Harrison didn't want to get sick, but he has to deal with it because of you. Poor Harrison. It's a shame he was born to a woman like you. If it wasn't for you, he'd be running around happy and healthy right now. <laughs> How can you say such a cruel thing? We both have a responsibility for our child. Don't just blame me for everything. That's nonsense. Children's problems are all for their mothers. In other words, it's your responsibility. It's not my fault. I've never had any respiratory illnesses, so never get in my car again or even touch it. If you do, you'll regret it for real. Billy, I'm disappointed in you. Is that how you talk to your wife? I'm starting to wonder why I even married you. Why are you so angry? Is there something you don't want me to see? Huh. Hold on there. I never said anything like that. I just don't want anyone in my car. Stop saying stupid things. Just don't touch my car anymore, okay? Fine then, bye. I have work to do. I'm busy, not like you. Some days later... I have something to tell you, Billy. I got in your car earlier, so I just wanted to let you know. I don't want it to become a problem later. Hey, hey, hey. How many times do I have to tell you? I never thought you were someone who couldn't understand such a simple thing. I told you not to touch my car. You can't drive your old car instead? That old clunker should be more than enough for you. Billy, please listen to me until the end. Earlier, I told you that I had something to say, so let me say what I wanted to say without interrupting me. The car you bought broke down the moment your friend stepped on the brakes. 
It's still smoking in the yard now, <laughs> and it seems impossible to drive on the road. I wonder how much the towing fee will be. I guess it costs more than the car itself. It's ironic that you spent 10,000 yen on the car, but ended up spending more. That's why I told you earlier, but you never really listened to me. Your friend looked like he was feeling bad. You should apologize to him the next time you see him. Your friend didn't do anything wrong, so never blame him. Also, I just went to get something I forgot in the car. I had no intention of driving it. I'm not stupid, so I never even thought about driving your car after being told off like that. Forgotten something? What exactly did you forget? A video camera. I wanted to take a video of Harrison's class observation. A video camera? You went and bought an unnecessary thing without my permission? I never approved of such a thing. Don't buy stupid things with the hard-earned money I've been working so hard for. When did I ever say that I bought it with your money? I bought the video camera with money I earned from my part-time job. Don't worry, I didn't use your low salary to pay for it. Ha ha ha. Besides, wasn't it your old car that was a much more unnecessary purchase? After all, it broke down without ever being driven. That's a complete waste of money. When you add up the repair cost, towing fees, and the cost of the car, it's enough money to go on a trip. You're putting a strain on our finances wasting money like this. I think you should apologize to me a little bit, too. Stop that noise and sell that useless video camera right away and use the money to pay for the towing fee. You don't even know if your part-time job money will cover the towing fee, do you? I bought it for you, so you should be the one to pay for the towing fee. I won't pay a dime, so be prepared to cover the cost. I didn't ask you to buy me a new car. Speaking of which, I just remembered that this camera is actually quite small. If it was too big, it might have caused a distraction during the class, you know. I bought the camera after looking around the store and finally bought it for him. What's up? So sudden. I didn't even notice it was there. I bought it for my precious son, and it's a pretty good video camera. It's a video camera, but the battery lasts quite a long time. It lasts easily for three days. I think today's cameras are amazing. The LCD screen doesn't require much power on a small camera like this. That's why it can last for three days. Even cell phones don't last for three days on a single charge. It's really amazing. Huh? Wait a minute. Are you by any chance? Well, well. Please hear me out until the end. So... I had the switch on for three days, so maybe the inside of the car might have been recorded. But it doesn't matter, does it? It's not a problem even if the inside of the car is recorded. Hold on. Wait. Listen to what I have to say, Renee. Either smash that video camera right now, or you don't look inside until I come back tonight. And then give me the video as it is. Got it? Oh. Is there something that you wouldn't want to be seen? I can't imagine what kinds of things would be such a problem to be seen in the car. But it does make me curious. I've never seen you so flustered like this before. It must be something pretty serious. There's nothing on it. I was the only one in that car. Anyway, don't watch the camera, no matter what. Just give it to me. Just trust me and hand over the camera to me right now. You seem to be getting more and more worked up. <laughs> if you say that much, it just makes me want to look more, doesn't it? I'm going to check the video right away. I'm really looking forward to it. Once I check the contents, I'll let you know what's in the video as well. Wait, Renee, hey! Two hours later. Hey, there was nothing on the screen, right? Well, I found something really amusing. Ha ha ha. It was an incredibly exciting video. I never thought it could be this exciting. <laughs> I wanted to see it all quickly, so I watched it at two times speed. It seemed like the young woman you were with was also enjoying it a lot. You were enjoying a lot with the young lady. You told me not to use the car, but I guess it's okay for a young woman to ride 
in that car? Or maybe you have a special relationship with that woman. I really want to know what kind of relationship you have. I can't believe I would find out this way. Hey, don't jump to weird conclusions. That woman is a business associate, and there's nothing going on between us. We just needed a car to go to a client meeting. It just happened to be a young woman to go with, and it's not like I'm cheating or anything like that. Your job was all about hugging and fooling around with young women? What is your job exactly? <laughs> if your job really involved fooling around with young women, that would be a big problem. I've been misunderstanding your job all this time, but now I understand why you didn't want me to use your car. You were afraid I'd find out. What was man's romanticism you were talking about? I wonder if it's okay to talk about men's romanticism when you don't even have money. But you are doing something much worse than that. It's not okay, the mud splash on the car, but it's okay to engage in dirty behavior inside the car. Isn't it embarrassing for someone your age to behave like this? A father who is so obsessed with young women that he doesn't have time to think about his own son can't be called a father. Shut up. Aren't you ashamed recording behind my back? That's your fault watching the video without listening to me. You didn't see anything, got it? You're just making up stories now. It's you who are making embarrassing moves. Are you not ashamed of saying such things as an adult? And to top it off, telling me to pretend like I didn't see it. Have some shame. I just played around with another woman, right? You're such a small-minded woman. Isn't it something to be proud of that your husband is attractive enough? Are you out of your mind? First of all, it's normal for men to feel tempted to cheat when they see young women. And, let's be honest, an energetic and fresh young woman is more attractive than a tired and aging wife, isn't she? The reason I look tired is because you don't want to help me with our child and the chores. I'm not tired because I want to be. You don't help me at all. And instead of being considerate, you cheat on me. You really are an inconsiderate person. You're not acting like a decent human being. I wish you could be more considerate towards Harrison, too. But instead, you... I can't forgive you for using the car for such a thing. Harrison and I are using the car, too. You didn't even think about how we would feel about it. You are married and bringing another woman into the car. Anyone who thinks that's acceptable is insane. I regret following your request to move to your hometown when we got married 10 years ago. Back then, my career was going well, and I had a promising future. I gave up my career to serve you, but now I've had enough. I'm going to divorce you. I'm tired of you ruining my life. I think it's best for Harrison if I leave you. Who's going to do the housework if we divorce? You're the only one that does the housework. Huh? Is that what you think of me? Do your own housework. I hope you're not thinking of me as your maid or something. A wife is no different than a maid. Women should just shut up and do housework. What a backwards way of thinking. How can someone come to such an opinion? I've been blinded until now, but I've finally woken up. There's something seriously wrong with you. I'm getting a divorce. I'm going to file for divorce mediation, so be prepared. Don't say things like that. I'm not going to go through with a divorce settlement. We're even borrowing the house we're living in from my parents, and we're getting financial support from them. How am I supposed to explain that I'm cheating? Besides, isn't it harmful for Harrison if he loses his father? Stop talking about divorce for Harrison's sake. I see that you're suddenly trying to act like a responsible father, but it's too late now. I wondered where the money for the luxury car came from, and it turns out that you are getting financial support from your parents. You really are such a child. It might be difficult for someone like you, who is like a child. Don't worry. I can do it for you if you can't. I will explain everything that has happened so far. Wait for me. Hey, don't do whatever you want. Please don't say anything unnecessary. Three hours later. 
I showed the video to your father and mother. Both of them turned pale, and it was really sad to see. I felt a little sorry for them, because I don't have anything against them. By the end of the video, they were covering their faces and speechless. It was hard for me to see your parents' faces. Honestly, I had thought of just talking to them and leaving it at that, but they wanted to see the video. Are you serious? You're such a heartless woman. I never thought you would be this cruel. I don't want to hear that kind of thing from you. Both of them were very positive about considering divorce. It seems they never even dreamed that their own son would do such a thing. They seem to be providing financial assistance for us to move into a new house. So, I'm already packing our things. I have nothing to thank you for, but I'm very grateful to your parents. What have you done? Do you even realize what you have done? How can I face my parents when I see them next time? I was being a good husband all this time, and now all my actions have been for nothing. Don't worry, everything is going to be okay. Your parents were both very angry and said they would disown you. They won't provide any more support, and they plan to kick you out of the house you're living in now. Do you understand what disown means? It means they don't want to see you anymore. Well, at least one problem has been solved. Now you don't have to pretend to be a good boy anymore. <laughs> What's so good about it? Just because I cheated once, you're going to push me to this point? I've been working my ass off for ten years to support you all. Renee, don't you have any mercy in forgiving someone's sin? Even if I have a forgiving heart, your punishment is coming from heaven. After all, lying is a grave sin. Wh what? What? Besides, there were more than five women on the video, Billy. Did you forget how to count? I can't believe you talk about my forgiving heart. If sins accumulate, no one will forgive them. And you were also telling me that you were getting bored of your unattractive wife and sick son. You even said you wanted to get rid of them as soon as possible. Well, good for you. I'll give you the divorce you want. You have no compassion for others. I feel sorry for Harrison to have a father like you. Calm down. You have been living off the money I earned all this time. Don't you dare talk to me like that. You're just a housekeeper, mocking me like that. How are you going to live after divorcing me? You still have to pay for Harrison's medical bills, you know. Are you really that foolish to think you can support Harrison with your part-time job? If you want to apologize, now's your chance. I'm a forgiving person, so I'll give you one last chance. Explain to my parents that the video they saw earlier was fake, and I'll forgive you. You don't have to forgive me. It's all over now, anyway, and I don't need your forgiveness or anything like that. Now that my eyes have been opened, I don't want to be with you for one more second. Breathing the same air as you makes me sick. I didn't mention it earlier, but I'm almost done with preparing to move back to my parents' house with Harrison. We just need to buy tickets. Also, my former boss from the company I used to work for started a new business. They offered me a job there, so I don't have to worry about my work either. And we found a good hospital for Harrison, too, so everything is taken care of. That's... that's gotta be a bluff. Things can't just conveniently go your way like that. You don't have to believe me, but I think it's important to face reality. By the way, my salary was about twice what you were making. Your ten years don't seem to be worth much, do they? There's also evidence of being insulted, so I'll be seeking alimony from you and the other party involved. Of course, you will also be paying child support for Harrison, even if you don't have a heart, since you can't change the fact that you are Harrison's father, so you should at least fulfill your role as a father properly. I just bought a car and don't have any money. I used it all up. I had to buy that luxury car. Because I don't have any support from my parents, I have to find a new place to live. There's no way I can afford child support, let alone consolation money. Aren't we a couple? Can't we reconsider this? You should sell your beloved car. It could help with alimony, couldn't it? <laughs> Not my car. There's absolutely no way I'm selling it. It's my treasure, and it's more important to me than anything, even my life. Do you still intend to talk about the romanticism of being a man at this point? Choosing a car over us until the end? What a truly foolish person you are. 
talking to you gives me a headache. There's no need for me to talk to you anymore. Goodbye. Thereafter. Afterwards, Harrison and I went back to my parents' house. During the divorce mediation, Billy tried to hold back on alimony and child support, but I hired a specialized lawyer and spent money on it. Billy, who couldn't afford a good lawyer due to his lack of money, was stuck with an inadequate one. It was clear whose demands would prevail. Fortunately, all of my demands were granted, and Billy had a look of defeat on his face. He brought it upon himself. According to what I heard from my in-laws, they kicked Billy out of their house, as they had promised. After that, he apparently lived in his beloved car, which might have been good for him. It seems that the company where Billy worked was also a place he got into through his parents' connection, and he was fired from the company almost at the same time. It was not the in-laws who asked for his dismissal, but it seems they were looking for a good opportunity to fire Billy, who was originally incapable of doing his job. It's hard to imagine that he didn't even realize such things and went ahead to buy a new car. If he knew he would eventually lose his job, he wouldn't have been able to buy a new car in the first place. In the end, Billy had to sell his beloved car to pay the alimony. It seems that Billy told his mistress that it would never be discovered, but when their demand for alimony arrived, the women were furious. Everybody cut ties with him completely. With no place to live and no job, Billy lost his precious car as well. I heard he's living in a rundown car that he bought for 10,000 yen. I received a message from Billy saying that he wanted to start over and be a good father to Harrison. But Harrison has completely forgotten about his father, and I'm too busy with my new job. So I didn't reply to his message and just deleted his contact information. After that, we didn't hear from Billy again, so it seems like the deleting his contact was the right decision. Harrison was recovering well in a well-equipped hospital and his respiratory issues seemed to be resolving quickly. Plus, there was nobody around him who smoked like Billy did. It seemed like smoking really affected Harrison's health. I see Harrison with a smile on his face more, and the two of us are enjoying our new life together. Nice to meet you. Is that right? You know me, right? Huh? Who is it? Suddenly what? You are being rude. Oh, rude? Who is? What is it, really? I don't know you at all. I know you very well. That's it. I'm saying it's ridiculous. Ridiculous? Don't you think it's much more ridiculous to have a relationship with someone you know is married? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm single now. You have the wrong person. You're just going to pretend you don't know. Because I really don't know. I wonder if you still won't admit it after I say I have all the evidence. What evidence? I have no idea what you're talking about. Really? So, what about this? This is a photo of the evidence I have. What's this? A picture of you kissing my husband. Why do you have this? Oh, are you surprised by this? There's more. Look, I'll send you as much as you want. Hey, stop it! You can't get away with this. I told you to stop! Is it enough? I thought you wanted to see more. Don't mess with me. Looks like there's no need to hide it anymore. Yes, I am dating your husband. But what's wrong with that? What a defiant attitude. That's who you really are. I mean, if you already know, that makes it much easier. Why don't you just break up with your husband? We love each other. Your husband, he said he doesn't love you anymore. He said he wanted to get a divorce as soon as possible, but he couldn't because you're not convinced. He sighed in disappointment. Don't embarrass him too much. Just let him go as soon as possible. I see. Huh? What's that? This is really annoying. No matter what you say, we are deeply in love with a strong bond between us. 
plus and old women like you are not for him. Such an honorable person as the president of a company can't have such an old lady next to him, right? You should let him choose who he wants to be with. You've been prattling on and on, but I don't know what you're talking about. Huh? You're too old to understand what the younger ones are saying? I'm so sorry. Are you serious? Serious, whatever, duh. Instead of being with an old woman like you, it's better to be with someone younger and cute. He's going to be happy, you know, someone like me. So come on, get it? It can't be an old woman anymore. If you want your husband to be happy, step back here without saying anything. Break up now, right now. I see. I understand your point. So will you break up with him soon? I can't. Huh? I'm going to discuss it with my husband. Well, even if you talk with him, nothing's gonna change. Just break up with him, for your sake. I took the trouble to tell you. It's better for the both of you if you do as I say. Well, that's something my husband and I will discuss and decide. Wow, don't be a sore loser. Well, at best, you'll just have to struggle. I'll be waiting for your good news. Hey, I wonder what happened to the discussion. Do you feel like getting divorced? You heard it from my husband, right? Well, yes, but I want to hear it directly from you. So, how is it? How does it feel to be betrayed by your beloved husband? My husband admitted infidelity. Infidelity is a bad word. It's just that we are more deeply in love. When I first found out about my husband cheating on me, I was honestly depressed. But I'm feeling positive right now. I have enough evidence. Thanks to you so quickly admitting the affair. This also saves a lot of trouble. It was kind of easy. It's not for you. I just wanted to set him free as soon as possible. Moving away everything that gets in his way so that he can come to me, who he loves. If you understand, why don't you get a divorce? He's mine now. I want to be with him as soon as possible, so let him go right now. To get a divorce, it's a lot of work. If I could, I would break up with him as soon as I can. But not yet. Why? There's a reason why things don't go so quickly. Hmm. It's okay. I understand. Your husband is the president of a company and he has a lot of money. There's no other guy with such good conditions. About him being the president, his father is the chairman of the company, as you know. His father, the chairman of the board, is a little... What? What's going on? My husband and I work for the same company, right? It's no secret to all the employees that we are a married couple. So, the son of the chairman, who is also the president of the company, you know, cheating and getting a divorce, doesn't look good. That's why I'm saying it's not going to be easy. I'm not sure, but you just signed the divorce papers, right? Isn't it easy? Well, I guess it was hard to ask you, a child, to understand. Excuse me? We have a lot to talk about. See you soon. I don't care. Just get divorced soon. Hey, old lady. You're not divorced yet. When are you going to get a divorce? I'm tired of waiting. I told you that, right? Getting a divorce is not easy. And that's not even the point right now. Really, that guy? He's such a bad guy. What? What do you mean? You know, right now, we're having a lot of troubles with my husband and his parents. Well, it's all that guy's fault. Are you sure you want that guy? He is a terrible man. Alimony for this affair? It doesn't look like he's going to pay. What? Are you fighting over money? You seem like a money-hungry person. Shall I take care of that alimony? If you get a divorce quickly, I will collect money right away. I'll pay alimony for him and for me.
for two, okay? Oh, can you do that? I don't think a kid like you can pay that kind of money. I mean, you know what a l h u m o n i means. Don't make fun of me. I can do anything for him. Are you serious? Of course I'm serious. Don't underestimate my love for him. I really love him. I can do anything for him. So that's nothing. Well, I guess you can't do such a thing. I see. If you can go that far, okay. I charge my husband $30,000 and you $15,000. If you pay me the full amount, I'm going to divorce him soon, as you wish. Are you trying to rip me off? I don't want to be the old woman all about money. But okay, I'll transfer it right away. Can you prepare such a large amount of money right away? I'll borrow what I don't have. You mean getting into debt? That's right. If this is what it takes to get him, it's a small price to pay. Well, if you're okay with that, to me, it doesn't matter if you borrow money or not, if you pay alimony properly. Well, I'll be waiting for you to transfer the money. I'll transfer it right away. Get ready for a divorce and wait. I paid all the alimony. You're going to divorce him, right? Go file your divorce papers now. Oh, thank you for your hard work. Then I'm going to divorce him. Hurry up. But are you really sure? You even borrowed money for a guy like that. If you want to turn back, it's your last chance. Don't say anything terrible about him. You're the reason he fell out of love with you, aren't you? Compared to a cold woman like you, I'm much kinder and cuter. I'm a good woman. He told me. I feel proud to have helped him. Well, I don't care about that anymore, that guy. If you're willing to have him, be my guest. Huh, you're a loser. Just because you were abandoned, it's ugly. Feel free to say whatever you want. Then I'll contact you again when the divorce papers are accepted. Divorce papers accepted. Really? Yay! Now I'm the president's wife! I finally got the position of the president's wife! Now you're going in the trash! Will you finally get out of that big house? It's my house from today! Rest assured, I left that house a long time ago. Oh, but he doesn't live there anymore. Huh? What do you mean? Well, you haven't heard anything from him. He keeps quiet about things that aren't convenient for him. He's vain. I told you to stop talking about him like that. And what do you mean? That I don't understand. You don't seem to know anything. I'll tell you. There's nothing left for him. The position of president of the company. Really, nothing. Huh? Wait, what? That's a lie, isn't it? Don't lie to me. I'm not lying. Well, by order of his father, the chairman of the board, he is no longer the president. Or rather, he got fired from the company. What? I was originally and thankfully valued by the company. The chairman of the board trusted me. He loved me like his real daughter, more than his biological son. So when he found out about the affair, the chairman was furious. He went to my husband. Because my husband can't disobey his father, he was begging on his knees, crying and apologizing. But the chairman refused to forgive him. It's not me you're going to apologize, it's Rebecca. He said that for me. He has declared that if he breaks up with me, he'll take away his position as president. No, that's a lie. You're making it up. You're just making that up out of frustration. You're just miserable. I'm telling you, it's true. The chairman was hesitant to hand over the position of president to my husband in the first place. My husband has always been a bad performer. His performance at the company wasn't that good either. But since he was going to marry me, who was trusted by the chairman, the chairman was relieved to hand over the position of president to my husband. But he's too busy with the young girls. I can't have you sitting in the CEO's seat after you and Rebecca split up. That's how his father took his position as president and then kicked him out of the company. And by the way, the father and son are cut off from each other. So you can't rely on him financially. What? How come? What a shame. 
I know you dreamed of being the wife of a gorgeous, extravagant CEO. My ex husband seems to be at rock bottom right now. The two who built true love wish you happiness. Hey, wait! Hey, answer me! Hey! Hey, please! Help! I'm really in trouble. Oh my goodness, what's going on? Aren't you happily married right now? Not really. Like this? It shouldn't be like this. He. Since then, he's been barging in, begging me to let him move in because he's been kicked out of his house. In such a small apartment. We don't have enough money. I hate living like this anymore. I thought I could be the president's wife. Becoming a celebrity, living in a big house, a luxurious life. I thought everyone would admire me. I asked you if it was really okay to be with him, right? Wasn't it you who agreed? I never thought this would happen. Who could expect this? But because of the divorce, he lost all his money and his social status as a president. And it's all for you to be with you. You guys love each other deeply, don't you? You're the only one he can rely on. So be gentle, okay? You said you had a strong bond with true love, didn't you? Good luck. Really? I didn't think it would go this way. Hey, the alimony I paid you? Can you give me back a little? He doesn't work at all. I'm really struggling with money right now. I can't pay you back. Wasn't it a small price to pay to be with him? Don't say that. I'm really in trouble. Please. When I asked him to pay for the rebuilding, he said, Why do you think I have that kind of money? He got upset. Terrible, don't you think? I went into debt to save him. I've said it many times. That's why I asked you if it's really okay with him. He's that kind of guy, and he doesn't have any money. He is rather in debt. Wait, debt? Well, didn't you even know that? I can't believe he's in debt. He didn't tell me that. That person. He embezzled company money. When he was dating you, he must have been very rich, wasn't he? Fancy restaurants, luxury inns, accessories, and high brand things. Looks like he spent a lot on you. But that money, it's all company money. Huh? Company money? Dates and gifts for you? Apparently, he didn't want to pay from his own pocket. He kept spending the company's money. His father found out about it, and he was pretty pissed off. He was forced to return everything immediately. So he borrowed money and paid it back. I thought he could get it back quickly because he's the president. That's why I borrowed alimony for him. Well, it didn't work that way. What am I supposed to do? You two love each other, and you have to do your best to give it back. What? Unreasonable! Because he doesn't work. He spends money like an idiot. I can't live like this anymore. Nothing I can do. I'm telling you to do something. You can reduce my debt. Please ask the chairman. He loves you like his real daughter, right? No thanks. Think of what you did. You have to be responsible. You don't have to worry so much. The power of love between two people bound by true love? You'll be able to get rid of the debt. Good luck! Hey, answer the phone! Please don't abandon me! I quickly blocked Mira's line. I blocked my ex husband when I divorced. So I was able to completely cut ties. Mira and my ex not only are in debt, but his money spending and sloppy habits have been exposed. Apparently, they are on the verge of a breakup. Well, I don't really care. I am still loved by the chairman and his wife. And surprisingly, I became the president of the company. The company's performance is growing rapidly, and I'm living a very happy life.
Hey, Charlotte. Hey, you are very late. Were you working overtime? I have a surprise for you today. Surprise? I wonder what it is. I just married Jean. Married to Jean. Well, Jean is a common name. I didn't know about your boyfriend. I think you're not getting it right. The ace of our company's sales department? Jean, who used to be your fiancé? Wait a minute. Jean and you got married? I don't know what you're talking about. Our wedding is in a week. You said you'd be at the wedding too. Oh my God. That's why I rushed to officially get married. I just got back from the town hall. That's why I was so late. Sorry. Angela, explain to me. I don't understand what you're saying. Don't you understand? You are such a fool. I'm saying I took Jean from you. You are the fool? Do you think you can do that? I have invited my family and relatives to my wedding. You don't have to worry about the ceremony. I will attend the ceremony. Not as a friend, but as the bride. He never said anything to me. It's hard to tell you, you know, that he's going to marry someone other than his fiance, And we're in the same company and we know each other. I'll tell you everything on behalf of him. Is there anything else you want to know? I had no idea. Since when did this happen? About a month ago, he said he had something he wanted to talk to me about. Talk about something? About what? It was about you. He wasn't sure about the marriage with you. That's what he says? That's right. We became friends eventually. Jean wants to marry me. More than a plain person like you. That's why we got married today. Even so, you're insane to get married a week before our wedding. We've been preparing a lot. What are you angry about? Think about it. I am giving you a week and I am even telling you all about this. You have no right to complain about me. You should thank me. You're such a... You don't think what you did is terrible at all? Why should I? My plan was... On the day of the wedding, the bride is replaced. While your relatives and friends are watching, you leave miserably. What do you think? Isn't it thrilling? You've seen too many movies. Well... Jean stopped me because he felt sorry for you. He didn't want that to happen in front of his relatives and friends. He wants to be nice with everybody. You and Jean already paid for the ceremony, didn't you? It's a waste, so I'll attend the ceremony for you. You've been talking crazy for a while now. All the attendees on the bride's side will be my relatives and friends. There are a lot of people who don't even know you. Some of the groom's attendees are mutual friends. That's going to look strange. How are you going to explain it? I don't care about that. Jean is fine as it is. Your relatives and friends have to be absent. Just call my relatives and friends instead. There is still a week till the ceremony. If I call them to the ceremony, everyone will come right away. Simple as that. It's not that simple. Yes, it is. Everything will be fine. You can contact your relatives and friends. I can't contact them like that. Cancelling the wedding a week before? Just tell everyone the truth. The groom married a woman prettier than me, so you don't have to come to the ceremony because a new bride is becoming in my place. If you cancel one week before, you'll be charged a cancellation fee close to the full amount. Then I'd better take your place. You don't want to waste your money, do you? That's not the problem. 
You two are just going to embarrass yourselves. It's not just my colleagues and seniors who know the three of us. Even my boss is invited. What will they say? Jean wouldn't like it. Jean agrees with me. When a senior or boss of the company comes, you're the one who will be embarrassed. Huh? Why? It's obvious. A woman whose groom was stolen by a colleague from the same company one week before the wedding? As a woman, what could be more embarrassing? That's why I'm kind enough to say I'll show up for you. Don't be selfish. You and Jean are not a good match to begin with. He's the ace of sales, right? This term, he was at the top of the standings, far ahead of everyone else. I know. He has money and he is good looking. It's wrong of him to marry you, a plain, unpretty girl. I thought about it long before he asked me for advice. Yes, I get it. I'll contact the bride's attendants. Oh, so you throw in the towel? It's not fun to win so easily, but I kind of feel bad for you. You're happy only now? Huh? What? You're a bad loser. No. I should think I'm lucky not to be married to a man who would marry another woman, even though the wedding preparations are already underway. I knew you were a bad loser. Well, I don't care anymore. Be happy with Jean. Can you come to the wedding as a friend? I'm not. You can do whatever you want. So take care of the ceremony. Oh, you're not coming? Too bad. Don't contact me anymore. I'm sorry for calling you so suddenly. Charlotte, are you with my son? No, I'm not with him right now. What happened? I got a call from my son saying that he is going to marry someone else. But he says the ceremony will go as planned and I don't know why. That's why I contacted you. Something is wrong, isn't it? I heard about it only an hour ago. I heard that he married a person named Angela from the same company. She will be the bride instead of me. They said the cancellation fee was a waste. What a stupid thing. I can't believe my son would do such a stupid thing. But is that really true? Yes, I'm sorry. Charlotte, I am really sorry. I sincerely apologise. Please don't. It's not your fault. Though, I can't believe what he did. I'll cover alimony and wedding expenses. I want you to tell me the amount. I can't. You and your family have been so nice to me. It wasn't supposed to be like this, but... It's not your fault. I'm really sorry. Thank you for your concern. I have to contact my relatives and friends about the wedding. Oh, I'm sorry to bother you. No, well then. Hey, Charlotte. Charlotte, you are so annoying. Are you listening? Hey. Do you still want something from me? I've been busy calling all over the place about the wedding. That's it. Because of that, I'm getting a lot of emails here and it's annoying me. You don't have to tell your colleagues so quickly. Oh, if you don't make it quick. The wedding is in a week. We have to hurry. I've contacted my friends and family. I'm in contact with my colleagues and seniors at the company. When this is done, I have to contact my boss as well. I'm too busy to talk to you. I'm busy here because of you. I've already explained it to more than five seniors, but they keep emailing me one after the other saying, explain what this means. It's annoying. You got what you deserved. If you suddenly get a call a week before the wedding saying, the bride is changing from Charlotte to Angela, anyone would wonder what had happened. And it's the same company. You should explain it to everyone in detail. What if Jean could help you? 
I'll give them as many explanations as they want. Why do I have to be lectured by a senior employee of a company I don't even know? I can't believe there are so many haters. I'm so sick of it. Because what you're doing is insane. Shut up. They're just trying to be mad at me, but they're really congratulating us. Because you're miserable, pathetic, and they feel sorry for you. Because Jean is an elite and the most popular guy in the company. Everyone thinks he'd rather marry me, a pretty girl, than you. On the day of the wedding, everyone will congratulate us. Yes, I congratulate you both and thank you. Sure, you two look good. Ah, what? Suddenly? I hate to say this, since I called you insane, but... I was thinking of calling off my engagement to Jean. Huh? What are you talking about? Ah, uh, your loss. Well, you're going to tell me what a loser you are. Your elite, rich, cool fiancé was stolen. I know how it feels. I'll at least listen to your sigh of defeat. A man like that? I wouldn't say anything if he was taken from me. I'd rather thank you. Do you think Jean is really elite and wealthy? But that's the truth. I knew it was just you being a sore loser. He's a good catch. I'm sorry I took you away from him when you were so close to marrying him in a week. I can understand your frustration, but that's the reality. Let me give you the reality too. Jean is gambling crazy and buried in debt. Ha! Huh? I can't believe you would say such bullshit. It's not bullshit, it's the truth. That's a lie. I've never heard of that, not even at work. And he never said that. Of course he would hide it. I first found out about it when I saw his phone a month ago. When I questioned him, he immediately confessed. That's a lie, right? It's not true that he's buried in debt. He's an elite in the sales department and he makes that much money. Sure, he has an income, but it's not enough. So he seems to be borrowing money to gamble and invest. Even if he makes some money from gambling or investing, he can use it for the next gamble or investment. He's losing a lot of money after all. He can't even pay interest, so I doubt consumer loans will lend him any more. That much? How much does he owe? I don't know the total amount because he's probably hiding it. I think it's more than 72,000 US dollars. No way! At the same time, I also talked to him about breaking off the engagement, but he didn't listen. I'm really glad you married him. Thank you. You saved me. Bullshit. No way. Charlotte, the wedding is going to be as planned with you and Jean starring. I'm divorcing Jean. Did you talk to Jean? You were right. I'm so sick of it. He said he would marry me and pay off his debts because I was easier to deal with than the serious Charlotte. I'm going to divorce that bastard. I'll give him back to you. It's too late. I apologised to everyone who I invited with an explanation and an apology. He was originally your fiancé. You take him in. I don't need that kind of damaged goods. If you don't like your wedding, why don't you cancel it? There's a cancellation fee, right? Obviously. I can't pay that. I didn't even know about his debt. Please, do something about it. You asked for it. Do something about it yourself. Charlotte, I'm sorry. Forgive me, I'm really sorry. I don't have any savings, and I can't pay cancellation fees, let alone debts. Please help me. Please. It's too late. I'm sorry. 
but I don't want to help you or Jean. I don't want to get involved with you. Wait a minute, Charlotte. Hey, Charlotte, help me. Charlotte, how are you? I'm fine, how are you? I thought I'd give you an update on my son's wedding. I know you don't want to hear this. Let me hear it. It was a terrible ceremony. All the company officials were absent. My son's relatives were also confused because the bride's name was different. I heard about the debt from Angela. When I questioned that idiot, he said he owed a hundred thousand US dollars. I almost got you in trouble. That much? That's more than I thought. And after he married Angela, he got involved in black money. Even black money? He made her co-sign his loan. He put her name in seal without permission. Angela is mad at him. As for Angela, she got what she deserved. You don't have to worry about it. Yes, I'm sorry I couldn't be in a family with a serious person like you. But if he got married to you, he would have made you go through a hard time, so I guess that's fine. I caused you trouble, but I want you to be happy. Will you contact me again if you like? Of course. Thank you for the thoughtfulness. Since then, Jean and Angela have divorced, but she was co-signed by him, so they are still paying off their debts together. Their colleagues at work turn a cold shoulder to them and they feel ashamed, but they can't even resign because of the debt. I quit because it was difficult for me to stay at that company too, but with Benjamin's help, I got a good job. I'm going to work hard and advance my career. Hey Ron, did you finish your work? I've just got a craving for something sweet. I want you to buy something for me at the dessert store near your office. I've heard the pudding at that store is delectable. So can you buy me one? Hi Elena. I want to buy one for you, but I've already finished my work for today and just got on the train. Sorry, but can I buy it tomorrow? Or if you're fine with the one from the nearby supermarket on my way home, I'll buy that. I just want the pudding from that dessert store. I want it not tomorrow, but today. Well, Alina, I said I've already got on the train today. It's already left the station. Then change trains to buy one, because you can get on trains anytime. So isn't it easy for you to just go back and get one? Even if you go back to the store, you can return home today. Sorry, Alina. I've been busy with work lately and been late getting home, so I'm tired now. Today I was finally able to leave the office on time, so I want to go home earlier to relax. Please. What are you saying? Tired from work? Isn't working hard enough to get tired one of the roles as a husband? Don't say you want to relax at home earlier like a baby. A husband is always supposed to work hard, but you can't do the smallest thing like buying a pudding just because you're tired. What are you? Do you really have the right to be my husband? It's a bit too harsh, I guess. Indeed, working hard is important, but sometimes I just want to relax. And you said it was one of the roles of a husband, but Alina, do you actually play the roles of a housewife? You always dress up and never clean up or do the laundry, let alone cooking, and never do anything a housewife is supposed to do. I always do those chores by myself after coming back from work, or I spend an entire weekend to do them. You too can't do what you're supposed to do. Ron, what? Haven't you promised me that you'd cherish me before getting married? Instead, now you're too lame and not able to buy me a pudding and even blame me. I'll break up with you. I never thought you'd be so terrible. I'll divorce you already. Hey, calm down, Alina. Perhaps I said too much, but cherishing you doesn't mean spoiling you. Cool your thoughts a little. I'm keeping calm. Okay then, if you buy me the pudding I asked you to buy first, I'll forgive you. If you don't, I'll have dinner with my friends this evening. I told you that I couldn't. I'll get to the nearest station from home soon. I can't buy it today no matter how hard I try. Alright then. Then I'm going to go to the fancy restaurant to have dinner with my friends. Cause I don't want to see your face and it'll be refreshing. Too bad your dinner is not ready, Ron. Go to some supermarket and buy one yourself. And don't forget to take care of Galvez. Haven't you fed the dog? He must be starving now. Can you leave home at least after feeding him? No! I have to leave home now. I'll leave everything to you. 
I'll not be able to reply to you for a while. <sighs> I see. Late at night. Alina, are you coming home early tomorrow morning again? You keep coming home early in the morning every day for about a year now, while we spend every day together when we just got married. Aren't you the one that doesn't do what a wife should do after all? What? Are you complaining about me? Besides, are you still talking about a wife's role or something? Seems like you still can't keep your promise to cherish me. Oh, by the way, I'm going to go travel with my friends for about a week. Travel? For a week? I didn't know that. Of course you didn't. I never told you about it. You can just feel lonely here without me while I'm on the trip. And regret deeply. If you change your attitude, I will travel with you next time, Ron. As long as you pay for everything. Got it. You'll keep this sort of attitude, won't you? Anyway, I have to leave for work in the morning, so make sure to lock the door when you leave for the trip. You have that kind of attitude, too. Just change it while I'm out. Otherwise, I'll really get a divorce from you. One week later. Ron, are you starting to miss me now? I have something to tell you. A really wonderful thing. Will you finish the trip soon, Alina? What kind of thing do you want to tell me from this destination? You'll be surprised for sure. Actually, I... Got a baby in my belly! While I was traveling around, I felt sick, so I couldn't help with going to the local hospital and found out that I was pregnant! Are you pregnant? Alina, is it really true? I can't believe it. It's true! Can I send you a pic of the test result? Anyway, you're now my husband and this baby's father, so I want you to take responsibility as a father. It'll be physically harder for me as a mother, and I have to take care of the baby after it's born. So you should take good care of me then. Sorry to interrupt the happy news, Alina, but I think we've not done the thing for a year or more. Then how come you got pregnant? I don't remember when I did that with you. Of course you don't, Ron. You were terribly drunk on the night we made this baby. I never drink alcohol. My parents can't drink and neither can I. Don't you know that? So I've never been willing to drink, let alone getting terribly drunk. Didn't you get drunk because you were not used to it? I don't know what exactly happened, but you were already drunk when you came home. I thought you had a drink with your colleagues. No, no way. My colleagues never press alcohol on me, because they know I can't drink. And first of all, I've been too busy to go to any restaurant with them. This may hurt you, but I have to ask, Alina. Is the baby really mine? It's so terrible, Ron. I thought for sure you'd be happy. You don't sound happy and even ask me if it's your baby? Of course it is. What do you think I am? Do you think I'm so easy to have a relationship to another guy even though I'm married with you? Calm down, Alina. I just don't remember it. I'm already fed up with it. Do you feel so suspicious of me that you're fine with getting divorced? I need no husband nor father so skeptical about his wife. It's bad for our kid. Alina, I've been thinking about the same thing for the past year. Eh? What do you mean? Let's divorce, Alina. We just don't get along well. Huh? What are you going to do all of a sudden? You said we'd get a divorce too, right? I was just joking. I just want you to change your attitude, so... But you said you'd been thinking about it? What does it mean? Besides, how dare you say that just after I told you about the baby? Are you serious? I'm already tired of your selfish attitude, and I'm not sure the baby's mine. No, it can't be mine. I think that is a good enough reason to get a divorce. I said it's yours. You don't believe your wife's words and ask for a divorce? Don't you feel responsibility as a husband and father, or even as a man? Are you going to abandon me and my kid? Sorry, but I can't believe your words. Whatever you say, I won't change my mind. Anyway, I'll be back home soon. I can be back in two to three hours. Talk more about it in person. If you insist to get a divorce even after that, you shall pay much for my damage. Of course, you'll also pay money to support the baby if it's born. Take your time to think about it before I'm back. One hour later. Hey, Ron. What's this? Why aren't you in our apartment? You, your things, and even Galvis is not here. What are you going to do? I don't have anything to talk with you about. I just left. You've left a pregnant wife alone? What kind of punishment is this? Doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman, but this isn't a normal thing for a human to do. 
You're the worst kind of jerk, Ron. I'm disappointed. Who's the worst jerk, Alina? No one but you betrayed me first. Huh? What are you talking about? Stop saying weird things. And anyway, come back home immediately. I've already checked to find out you had dinner at the fancy restaurant the other day and went to travel that time with a college student you're having an affair with. Don't say such a weird thing. Please listen to me and come back home already. I don't even know any college students. Have you forgot about the pet camera for Galvis? Who we got because you wanted to have him so much? Everything was on camera the moment you invited the guy to our home. In the scene, you were talking with him happily. Of course, more intimate things, too. Huh? Pet camera? When did you get it? I'm so upset you've put such a thing at home without asking me about it. Did you install it to watch me instead of Galva's? Such sneaky recordings will make for no evidence. I can sue you for secret recordings instead. You may have forgotten this, but do you remember the day Galvis got seriously ill suddenly? What does it have to do with this? Do you mean you've installed it because you were worried about Galvis? We don't need a pet camera as I stay home with them. Even if you want one, you should have asked your wife. You really have a selective memory, Alina. You didn't notice his illness as you were hanging out. I noticed it after being back home and took him to the hospital. Thanks to that, Galvis is now fine and alive, but don't you remember we had an argument back then? I told you to take care of him. Oh, I just remembered it. But I just happened to go out that day. What does it have to do with the pet camera? You said it yourself, but don't you remember yet? While you were arguing with me, you told me that I should install a pet camera if I'm so worried about Galvis. As long as I take the responsibility to take care of him. You said that first. I didn't install it without your permission. Did I? I don't remember it. You did. You said that we should install a pet camera first. I never imagined that it would record proofs of your affair. It... it can't be. At first I tried to turn a blind eye to it, and told myself that you just lost yourself for a while. But your attitude with me got worse and worse, while you and the guy on the pet camera looked so happy and getting along well. I couldn't stand that. I... I didn't mean to. I actually lost myself then, as you said. I missed you and it hurt me. Alright then. I have other evidence besides the pet camera, which proves you're so crazy about the student more than you told me. What do you mean? I hired a detective to investigate my wife's affair. Then I got quite a few proofs that prove you clearly have an affair with the student. Oh my! I'm shocked to hear that you hired a detective! You have only yourself to blame. I've gathered enough evidence so I've been able to do anything if I've made my mind up. I had to choose between talking with you to get back together or getting a divorce. Then talk with me! No, I can't. You made a baby with the student and asked me to raise it as my kid. I have no confidence in getting along with you and I can't do so anymore. No way! By the way, of course I'm getting a divorce from you and asking for you to pay damage. No! I don't want to do it! I apologize to you, so don't bring up a divorce. I was just missing you. Even if you miss me, how do you think you're allowed to cheat on me? It doesn't make sense, does it? Ron, if you can be a little more kind to me than before, I'll never cheat on you anymore. Please, let's talk together. If you can be kind to me, I can get along with you again. In this apartment, let's live happily together with me and our baby. Are you asking me to live with a cheater and another guy's kid? I can't do such a thing. Oh, and I forgot to tell you this, but... What? I've already cancelled the apartment lease. You can stay there tonight, but better to leave tomorrow. Cancelled? Why did you do it? Why? Cuz, I was the contractor and I have no reason to live there after getting divorced. It's disgusting to live in the room my wife used for infidelity. You're not staying calm now, Ron. Are you moving out of our apartment? You're insane! Alina, you're truly insane. Anyway, I'll go back to my parents' house today, so we can rest well tonight, then talk together again. I think you can't go back to your parents' house. Why? I talked to your parents about you and brought them evidence of the affair. I told them about the divorce and they agreed with it. Your mother was crying while apologizing, as she said that she felt sorry for me because of her stupid daughter. Your father was so upset that he said he'd cut ties with such a foolish daughter. So I guess you can't be allowed to stay at your parents' house. N no way! You even convinced my dad and mom? 
I'm really shocked to hear that. Actually, you've always shocked me with your behavior. What do you think I should do from now on? Don't ask me. Anyway, your parents will get a comment certified mail from the lawyer a few days later, so at least visit them to get it. I'll tell your parents to hand it to you. A content certified mail? For documents and compensation. Read it carefully and pay accordingly. I can pay no compensation, because I'm just a housewife. I don't have much money, as you know. I don't have it, so I can't pay it. I've been depending on your salary. Then work for yourself. You can divide the payment as I'll wait for you to get it fully paid. You're no longer a housewife, but a single woman, so you can work freely, can't you? I've not worked before, and I'm pregnant. Are you telling me to work with a baby in my belly? Besides, where should I and the baby live from now on? It's more important than work. How about finding a workplace and applying again for the apartment lease? Or you can live with a student. You can live in his apartment and split the rent. Even a pregnant woman has many options for a workplace. As I just told you, I've never worked before. I can't start working anytime soon. Besides, he's still a college student. He still lives with his parents and is not working even as a part-timer. It's impossible for us to pay rent, living expenses, and compensation. You have only yourself to blame, Alina. As you said to me, if you took better care of me, this wouldn't have happened. Don't you feel sorry for me and the baby? This baby is really not the student's, but it's actually yours, you bastard. It's no use lying anymore, Alina. I can't believe your words nor behaviors. If you got more to tell me, get a DNA test of the baby and hire a lawyer. Wait, Ron. I have something more to tell you. Come on, reply to me. Thereafter. After that, I got a successful divorce from Alina. Of course, later the documents clearly proved that the baby was not mine, but the college students. Alina asked her cheating partner to marry her to pay me the damages and expenses for their newborn baby. But he was just a student who did not want serious relationships, so he refused her because he was looking for a girlfriend who was closer in age. Even after that, Alina constantly asked him to marry her. Finally, he told her that he was fed up with her and they ended up in a breakup. Alina even asked her parents for help, but they refused to help her because they'd already cut ties with her. In such a situation, she texted me and told me that I was the only one she and her baby could rely on, and she asked me for an exemption from compensation, as well as paying expenses for her kid. While I was amused by her boldness, I blocked Alina's account to break off with her. According to one of our common friends, she was not aware that I blocked her, and she's sending one-way messages asking me for exemption, baby's expenses, and getting back together. Those can no longer reach me, and they're none of my business. By the way, I've moved to a new place she doesn't know and live here with my dog Galvis. Thinking about Galvis, the fact that Alina asked me to install the pet camera is the only thing I feel grateful for her, I guess. Now I live alone, so I need it in case something happens to Galvis. Amelia, do you have a moment? Yes, Mother. What do you need? It's about my dear daughter, Sibylla. Has something happened to Sibylla? I think she needs a nice boyfriend. Do you know anyone who would be a good fit? Um, even if you ask me suddenly like that, is something wrong, Mother? Did Sibylla say she wants a boyfriend? No, no, no. I heard you're getting married soon, right? Yes, I already told you about it, didn't I? I asked around about your fiancé. He's quite well off, isn't he? Well off? That's not the reason why I'm marrying him. That doesn't matter. The problem is that you have a suitable partner while Sibylla doesn't. Wh what You're bringing that up again? You are a worthless, useless woman who is only a stepchild. Sibylla is my own daughter, and she's cute and charming. If you're going to have a happy marriage, Sibylla must be happier than you. As my blood-related daughter, Sibylla has the right to a happier marriage than you. You're saying whatever you want as always. Comparing me and Sibylla until my wedding day? Our lives aren't yours to control. You've always favored Sibylla over me, your stepchild, since we were little. This time you've gone too far. I'm disgusted. We can decide who we marry and how we live by ourselves. Shush. I won't allow any rebellion or excuses. I didn't ask for your opinion. 
Anyway, please introduce me to a well-qualified man. I didn't mean anything difficult. Even an acquaintance of your fiancé is fine. An IT company, you said? Ideally, I'd prefer a professional such as a doctor or lawyer. Regardless of the profession, please choose an elite over your fiancé. Uh, listen, Mom, I think Sabila should decide about her own marriage. I understand you're worried because she's your precious daughter, but... Yes, that's right. I'm worried, don't you understand? Sabila is my precious, adorable daughter, and I'm worried about her. That's why I want her to be happier than you. Well, you didn't even meet my fiancé because you weren't interested, remember? Of course you and your fiancé don't matter to me. I'm talking about Sabila now. She's the child I carried and gave birth to, and she is my greatest masterpiece. She's so cute and lovely, just like me. Oh, my precious child. Okay, I got it. So, you want me to introduce you to an acquaintance of my fiancé? Don't say such stupid things. If you introduce a random acquaintance, I won't accept it. What kind of man do you prefer? The condition is a high income and wealthy family background. Huh? It's not easy to find such a man with those conditions. What are you saying? What are you saying? You're going to marry a man with those conditions, right? There's no reason why Sibylla, who shares my blood, can't marry a man better than that. Ah, okay, okay, I got it. It's not easy to find a man with those conditions, so don't expect too much. More importantly, are you sure that's what Sabila wants? There's no need to ask. High income and a wealthy family, these are a must. Please find a high quality marriage partner for your sister, Amelia. Otherwise, she will be unhappy. Wait a minute, mother? Stop making assumptions and please listen to Sabila's opinion a little. Once we've decided on her marriage partner, the next thing to do is the wedding venue. You're not listening to me at all. I'm searching frantically for a good man for Sabila's sake. You got it, Amelia? Hey, Amelia? Yes, mother, what is it? What happened with the man you were talking about the other day? Um, what are you talking about? Don't play dumb. You were talking about a potential marriage partner for Sabila. There must be some good men out there, right? Well, the condition you mentioned before, it's a bit difficult, stepmother. What? What are you talking about? Hurry up and find someone! I want her to get married around the same time as you, or even earlier. Anyway, I don't want Sibylla to fall behind you. Even so, there aren't any men who meet the criteria you mentioned. How could you say that? Don't you care about Sibylla? Don't say that, please. Compared to the cute and charming Sibylla, you're not much of a woman. And yet, even someone like you can marry a man from an elite company. There's no reason why Sibylla, who shares my blood, can't do it, right? Is that really an appropriate way to ask someone for a favor? Some things never change. I understand that you love Sibylla, but aren't you underestimating me a bit too much? Even my fiancé's colleagues. It's hard to find a man with such good condition. I'm trying my best, too. It's all right. You just need more spirit and determination. <sighs> you never change. What's with the sigh? Don't be rude. Besides, you only started talking about this after I decided to get married. What do you mean? I'm trying to get Sibylla married because you're getting married. I heard rumors about your fiancé. He has a good salary and comes from a wealthy family, doesn't he? Sibylla deserves to marry someone even better and be happy. I made the criteria based on your fiancé. Basically, what you're doing is wrong, mother. Oh, what are you talking about? Did you ask Sibylla's opinion on this? She might have her heart set on someone. You shouldn't just assume and make decisions without confirming that. Shut up! Who do you think raised you well? Forgetting the gratitude for how you were raised and saying whatever you want. As someone who shares my blood, Sibylla deserves a better marriage prospect than you, don't you think? It's you who are talking nonsense! My father is my real father, and you're the one who came into our family later on. If you're going to discriminate based on blood relations, then I should have something to say too. 
Oh my, Amelia? Why are you getting so upset? I was just kidding, just kidding. I'm not kidding. I'm serious. If you keep bothering me, I'll tell Dad. Just a few words will do. Oh, just tell him then. Let's see whose side he takes. Why don't you try? I'll report how you were abusive towards Sabila. What? Who's abusive? When Sabila rebelled, you hit her and forced her to do things against her will. Dad hates that kind of behavior. You know what I mean? Wait a minute. That's not relevant now. I'm done. I won't ask you anymore. I'll find a better man than your fiancé over here. Hey, Amelia. Answer me already. You're so slow. I'm tired of dealing with you. What is it, mother? Amelia, have you become willing to give up your fiancé to Sevilla? What? What are you talking about now? Oh, don't you know? I'm saying that I want you to give up your fiancé to Sevilla. But earlier, weren't you so worked up about finding someone for Sibylla yourself? I tried looking for myself, but I couldn't find any suitable men. So I thought I would ask you to give your fiancé to Sibylla. What? Why would it come to that? Oh, Amelia, why are you angry? Don't you think it's a good idea? You don't have to bother finding a good man for her. I think it's a great idea. I won't give up my fiancé. Oh, why not? Don't be so stubborn. Give him up for the sake of your sister. You're her older sister, right? Don't you think it's shameful to be so stubborn? Don't be ridiculous. Stop saying such incomprehensible things. What sister would give away her own fiancé? But there's no other man better than your fiancé. That means Sibylla has no choice but to marry your fiancé, right? Your fiancé would be happier marrying Sibylla than you. That's right, that gentleman would want to marry Sibylla. I'm truly disgusted. What's wrong with your head? Even though we're not married yet, we've made a promise for the future. He won't easily switch to another woman, even if it's Sibylla. Oh my, you're quite confident, aren't you? For someone like you, Amelia. What, what do you mean for someone like me? If you're that confident, why don't you send his contact information to Sibylla and see how it goes? Contact information? Why? Don't you get it? Amelia, I thought you were smart, but... How could I possibly understand? That's so absurd! Okay, let me explain. Once they make contact and get to know each other, he'll realize that Sibylla is better for him. After all, she looks better and has a charming personality. She takes after me, you know. So do you understand now? Send Sibylla the fiancé's contact information right away. That's it. Sibylla will be happier than Amelia for sure. I'm so glad. I was a little worried about what would happen. Thank goodness we found a man who will make Sibylla happy. Thank you, Amelia. Do whatever you want. I'm speechless with disgust. Really, I can't believe this person is my mother. Hey, take a look at this. What's this? Wedding dress photos? Over 50 of them? What's this? An insane number! I thought I hadn't heard from you in two weeks. What are you thinking, mother? Amelia, did you look at the dress photos? Uh, yes, there are a lot of photos, but they're lovely wedding dresses, aren't they? I can't believe it. Did you prepare all this for my wedding? What are you talking about, you fool? It's obviously for Sibylla's dress. Do you think I'd lift a finger for you? I see. I was foolish to even hope for a second. So, has Sibylla found a husband? <laughs> I can't stop laughing. Hey, Amelia, what do you think of this dress? Um, I think it's lovely, but... Of course you do, of course you do. I picked it out. It's for my cute, adorable Sibylla. Don't you think I have good taste, Amelia? Y yes I suppose So, about Sibylla's partner... That girl already has a boyfriend, and he's super elite! Hey, hey, Amelia, do you want to know what kind of man he is? You want to know, don't you? It's about your cute little sister, after all! Uh, sure, what's he like? He's an elite lawyer! That's why we don't need your silly fiancé! I'm so proud of her! As expected of my daughter with my blood, she found a wealthy partner to make things easier for me. 
It was worth all the hard work of raising her. Me and Sibylla were going to be happy. How wonderful that would be. I've been working hard for this moment. Oh, I just thought of something great. Hey, Amelia, your wedding is coming up soon, isn't it? Yes, it's soon. Why don't you have a joint wedding with Sibylla? I think it's a wonderful idea. What do you think, Amelia? Of course, it's fine. Actually, Sibylla also proposed a joint wedding ceremony, and I've agreed to it. You've become quite understanding, haven't you? I think a joint wedding ceremony with my sister is a lovely idea. Poor thing. Wouldn't you be embarrassed, though? Huh? Why would I be embarrassed? Isn't it obvious? Sibylla's partner makes more money than yours. He's even a lawyer. Your partner is just a company employee, right? If you focus on the bride, your sister is cuter and more charming than you. You'll definitely be embarrassed. I can't keep up with mother's thoughts and emotions, as always. Well, I gave up a long time ago. Anyway, my partner is also in favor of the joint wedding ceremony, and I think it'll be easier for our relatives and friends to gather if we have it together. Well, I was just concerned, but I understand why you would give up easily. The only thing you have over Sibylla is your intelligence. Sibylla, who takes after me, is cute, beautiful, and charming. You don't stand a chance against her. Enough with the sarcasm, please. By the way, about the wedding guests, could you tell me your wishes, Mother? We need to inform the venue about the number of guests. It's not your wedding, it's Sibylla's wedding guests. We have to make the wedding lively and glamorous. And to make it more glamorous, we need more people. From my brothers and sisters to my nieces and nephews, even our friends will attend. Should we also invite the neighbors to increase the number of guests? We need to have a large number of guests to make the party spectacular. And the wedding photos won't look good if the number of guests is small. Oh, we're going to be so busy. Even it's all for Sibylla, your wedding will be exciting too, Amelia. In the end, you'll be thanking me. Yes, yes, I always, I always appreciate everything you do, Mother. Hey, Amelia, answer me. What are you doing at a time like this? What's wrong? You look furious. Today is a wedding day, a happy occasion, right? Amelia, what the hell is going on? Explain it to me. Why are you angry, Mother? It's a commemorative day for Sibylla and me to be happy. Don't play dumb. S S Sibylla's partner is a woman. Don't say you knew it. Oh, she's a wonderful person. Th that means there will be three brides. Explain this to me so that I can understand. I'm not sure I can explain it to you in a way you'll accept, but I think you already know. Sabila is gay. She came out to me when we were teenagers. She thought something was wrong with her because everyone she fell in love with was a woman. She was really worried. Recently, same-sex marriage has become legal, but discrimination is still rampant. She couldn't confess her feelings to the person she loved, and she struggled and cried. However, she changed after meeting her current girlfriend. She is brave and kind, so Sibylla was able to change as well. She wants to help others with similar struggles by getting married to her same-sex partner and coming out to those around her. It's a beautiful goal. So I want to support and help Sibylla too. I asked her partner for help, and I was very happy when she said she wanted to cooperate. So we decided to invite as many people as possible and come out during the wedding. Th that that kind of thing. Your father won't approve. I hate to say it, but Dad knows about it. That's a lie! There's no way he would know about this! Why don't you ask Dad, then? When my sister and her partner decided to get married, they went to see Dad and told him everything. They went to see him? I didn't hear anything about this! Dad has a generous heart, and he accepted them. He said, your life is your own. Be happy with the person you've chosen. Those are wonderful words, aren't they? Your dad knows about all this? Wait, was I the only one who wasn't told? And on the day of the wedding like this, it's too cruel! Why didn't you say something? Why? Because if we told you, you would have made a fuss all by yourself, right? It would have been annoying and troublesome, so we kept it a secret until the last minute. What? 
Who are you calling annoying? I see, I get it. So that's what's going on. You're the one who planned all this, aren't you? Only someone as sneaky and mean as you could do something like this. It wasn't just me who decided. It was unanimous. Unanimous? Why? Why am I the only one being left out? Your dad? He betrayed me too? This can't be happening. It's impossible. Everyone? Everyone deceived me? Why? Why did this happen? I just wanted my daughter to be happy. I raised her with so much love. Where did I go wrong? If you don't understand, I'll explain it to you, mother. You just get what you deserve. What? Why do I deserve this when I haven't done anything wrong? I have raised my daughter to this day thinking only of her happiness. No. What you were thinking about wasn't your daughter's happiness. It was all about your own happiness. But Th that's not true. You discriminated between me, your stepchild, and your biological daughter, Sibila, and physically abused Sibila to raise her the way you wanted her to be. Your actions have led to today's result. Please, let Sibila be free. If you truly care about your daughter's happiness, you should do that. Sh shut up! You're so annoying. What do you know? It was really tough for me to raise Sibila alone after I divorced my ex-husband. I was happy when I finally got to marry your father, but you got in the way. Because you were always around your father, I was lonely. It's your fault. You're the bad one. I hope you'll become unhappy. I am technically your daughter, right? You said you have always lived your life thinking only of your daughter's happiness, didn't you? Don't make me laugh. In the end, your own happiness was more important than ours. Contacting each other will only make us unhappy. Let's stop, shall we? Let's never see each other again and be happy. That's what will make Sabila happy too. Goodbye, mother. Amelia, I actually wanted to talk to you about something. Oh, mother, you don't seem to be feeling well. Is something wrong? It's about Sabila. What happened to Sabila? I can't stop crying because I'm so sad. Are, are you crying, mother? Sabila, Sabila? Mother, I don't understand you if you keep crying. Please tell me what happened. Actually, Sibila left home. I don't know what to do. What do you mean? It's natural for her to leave home now that she's married, isn't it? But, 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 but she cut off all ties with me. What should I do, Amelia? Please think of something. Cut off all ties? The gentle and kind Sibila did that? Is that true? I wouldn't lie in such a terrible situation. Please think more carefully about this. To be cut off by a daughter who shares the same blood. Oh, what should I do? I see what you mean, Mother. Sibila cut ties with you. Um, I know it's painful for you, but please face reality. Sibila is fed up with you, Mother. Fed up? Why would she hate me? I raised her with great care. Don't say such foolish things. There's no way Sibila would think of me like that. There's no way? But didn't you say that she cut ties with you and left? Uh, well... It can't be helped. Let her go. Stop restraining Sibila and let her be free. This is no joke. What about my life? What are my plans? What plans? I was going to be taken care of by her husband, who was an elite lawyer. I worked hard and struggled to raise that child when she was young, all for that purpose. In the end, it was for yourself that you worked hard to raise Sibila, not for her. I understand why Sibila has given up on you. Don't talk like you know it all. What will happen to me from now on? Hey, Amelia, won't you persuade Sibila to come back? Persuade her? I want you to persuade that strange woman, the creepy lesbian, to break up with Sibila and make her come back home. That's impossible. What? Why? Don't say that so easily. It all depends on whether or not the family can live together, you know? Family? Didn't you just call that woman a creepy lesbian a moment ago? Referring to our family? Th that's not it. That was about the other woman, not Sibila. Sibila is a lesbian too, you know. Does that disgust you so much? N no, that's not it. Yes, Sibila must have been deceived. 
Sabila married her girlfriend of her own free will and left the house by her own choice. Let me give you some advice. Your discriminatory thoughts and remarks will surely bring harm to you. Wh why are you being so arrogant? I didn't ask for your opinion. You should persuade Sibylla to come back. Remember what you said at the wedding ceremony? W wedding ceremony? What are you talking about? Let's live happily without ever seeing each other again, remember? Never seeing each other again? Why, we're family, aren't we? Because meeting each other will only bring unhappiness. If I'm abandoned by my family, I'll be unhappy. It may be difficult for you, who has relied on me, Sibylla, and father for so long, but if you continue this kind of relationship, you will only become more and more unhappy. So let's stop this now. I'll cut ties with you two. What? Not just Sibylla, but you two? What will happen to me then? Goodbye, mother. Let's both be happy. Let's stop this involvement for that purpose. Wait a minute! If you all abandon me, what will happen to me? I'm sorry for my mother, but I rejected her calls and deleted her contact information. She was contacting me so persistently, but I had to toughen up and reject it all. When Dad heard about it, he was surprised at first, but Sibylla and I told him everything about the hardships we went through and how we were raised. He remarried when we were still very young, very young that we were still seeking our parents' affection. That's when Mother started to thoroughly discriminate me between Sibylla and ignored me. Meanwhile, Sibylla was also beaten and abused if she didn't do what Mother wanted, so we sisters were always afraid. We even asked Dad for help, but Mother interfered and managed to make everything look like my fault. But you know, now that I'm an adult, I realize that those hardships made my bond with Sibylla stronger. I have to thank Mother for that. Sibylla and I told everything to Dad after the wedding ceremony. Dad apologized for his own inadequacies and was furious at Mother, and they got divorced. Sibylla cut ties with Mother as she had declared. Same-sex marriage is still not widely recognized in society, so I was worried about them, but they are happy. Supporting her partner, who is a successful lawyer, Sibylla's life is fulfilling too. Our couples get along great, and we often have fun together. We have dinner parties at each other's homes and enjoy vacations together. Oh, by the way, Dad is going to remarry soon. Of course, after the divorce is finalized. We are planning a remarriage party. I'm so excited about it.